After meeting such a big shot, both Zoro and Crow felt that their strength was still too weak, and they couldn't even defeat some civilians, so they had to become a hundred times stronger. On the other side, Desaya has led her candy pirates to Logue Town and is rushing to the Bado family headquarters, she must resolve the conflict between Yubaba and Babaya. But the direction of the gunfire making her feel uneasy, and there was actually a pirate riot in Logue Town, with countless pirates burning, killing and looting. Suddenly a familiar figure appeared, and Dai Dai and Desaya immediately saw the most familiar person. Dai Dai didn't expect to meet that woman on the road, it was really such a fate. And Desaya didn't expect to meet Babaya on the road, but she didn't want to meet Babaya here at all. Babaya. Could it be that you, you have really killed Grandma and the others? Desaya asked with a pale face. He knew that Babaya was not the kind of man to give up. His appearance here meant that the matter with Po was over. That means both Po and Bado may have been obliterated by Babaya. That's right. The Bado family has been destroyed. This is the result that old lady Tang lay down on that day. Dai Dai has no regrets. He will not let Bartolomeo, who hates him extremely, grow up. Although the possibility is very small, he will not give any chance. Why? Why? Can't you let them go again for me? I'm ready to find you. Why? Why is this happening? Desaya screamed like a cuckoo crying for blood. She couldn't believe that her man had really killed her family. What should she do? I already let them go once for you. But you haven't done anything for me. You can't even keep a house. Since the only memory is gone, there is no need for me to miss you. And you didn't even think about coming to me, and you actually formed your own pirate group to go to sea. So, come on. Captain Desaya of the Candy Pirates, let's have a duel among pirates. Winner. Win it all. Dai Dai pulled out the third generation ghost and pointed at the red eyed Desaya. His face was terrifyingly cold, and his tone was even more chilling. Ho ho, he is really a cold blooded captain. Beiji Crow looked at Dai Dai with interest, his face showing an excited expression. Do you want to take away the woman you once had in this way? Babaya. Kill me. Desaya closed her eyes and gave up resistance. She really didn't know how to treat this man. Did you really do something wrong? Maybe when she left with Dai Dai, these things wouldn't have happened and everything would have been wonderful. Are you surrendering? Then the winner gets everything. From now on you will be a low-level pirate of the Big Daddy Pirates. If you dare to commit suicide, all your current crew members will die. Dai Dewey stepped forward and hugged Desaya's waist, lifted her in his hands, and quickly retreated. Several female crew members of the Candy Pirates were also pressed back by Crow and the others, with no ability to resist at all. Babaya. Kill me quickly. I won't get on your ship. Let my crew go too. Desaya struggled wildly on Dai Dai. She would never succumb to the hands of the devil who killed her family, even if she still loved this hateful man. Shut up. You are just my slave now. You have lost. Captain of the Candy Pirates. Your Candy Pirates have now disbanded and disappeared. Dai Dai ignored Desaya's struggle and continued to return to the ship with the crew, quickly leaving the island. Is this fun for you? It will only make me hate you even more. Desaya said sternly that she could not resist Babia's great strength. As long as I find it interesting, your opinion doesn't matter. Remember, you are just a slave now. Dai Dai said expressionlessly, as if he didn't care about Desaya's hatred. Maybe one day if all the feelings and bonds are really consumed, he will let this woman disappear completely. Desaya's struggles were slowly disappearing, as if she had resigned herself to her fate, and several of her crew members were in great panic. They had been forcibly kidnapped. Aboard the dreadnought battleship Saber, Nami and Queen Sugar were appeasing the chef Carmen who was invited back, promising that they would let her go as long as she found the next suitable chef. Of course, it's hard to say whether Captain Dai Dai will let him go. After all, on this ship, you can commit suicide, you can challenge the captain to kill him, but you can't get off the ship and disobey orders. Otherwise, it will be an inhumane thief. Dai Dai and the others quickly returned to the boat. After confirming that Zoro, the road idiot, was also back on the boat, they immediately ordered the sea beast Moo Moo to pull the boat away. This island is no longer safe. Even the commander of the Revolutionary Army has appeared and maybe even CP0 agents will appear next. When Nami and Queen Sweetheart saw Dai Dai coming back with a woman, they thought it was another woman they had snatched back like Queen Sweetheart. They were a little bit annoyed by this, but Dai Duo's majesty on the ship was too great. They didn't dare to complain. They could only find ways to ensure their status. Only after getting along with Dai Dai for a long time will you realize that this man is actually not that cold-blooded. 
Captain. We've brought the chef back. Nami asked Dai Duo for credit with an arrogant look on his face. He glanced at Desaya who looked haggard, but she suddenly felt that this woman seemed a little pitiful. She was countless times more desperate than the sweetheart queen when she was snatched back. She wanted to rescue the girl, but thinking of Dai Di's temper, she immediately gave up the idea. The most she could do was try to persuade Dai Di. Under Nami's introduction, Chef Carmen officially got to know the crew. However, Carmen was already panicking. She seemed to have really boarded the largest pirate ship in East Blue. Anyone who has read the newspaper in East Blue doesn't know the name of the Big Daddy Pirates. Dai Dai didn't expect Nami to be able to get this chef back. This guy's cooking skills were second only to Sanji in East Blue. Dai Dai would be very cruel to his enemies, but he showed his kindness to his own people, especially chefs and doctors. Welcome aboard, Chef Carmen. From now on, leave your dreams to us, and you will take care of our stomachs. Although Carmen, like Nami, is not strong enough, their professional abilities are very strong and they do not need to take the combat route. For this kind of crew, they are much gentler than people like Crow and Edrago. Captain Dai. Dot Dai Dai, please give me your advice in the future. Carmen finished this sentence tremblingly. It seemed that she was full of anxiety about her future life. She became a pirate for no reason. It was really a scrambled egg. A few days later, the news about the Big Daddy Pirates' attack on Logue Town was not as popular as the brief appearance of Bello Betty, commander of the Revolutionary Army's Eastern Army, in Logue Town. After all, Dai Dai is just a rookie pirate with a bounty of 30 million belly, while Bello Betty is a wanted criminal from the world government with a bounty of 400 million belly. After a few days of getting along with each other, Chef Carmen finally integrated into the Big Daddy Pirates. Several female pirates from the original Candy Pirates also became kitchen chores. Desaya's Candy Pirates actually have a few fast motorboats. They originally planned to form a motorboat unit, but now they are all cheaper than the Big Daddy Pirates. Nami quickly mastered the skills of using motorboats and took charge of them, while Desaya lost all rights and was raised by Dai Doi like a slave. If she doesn't realize it for a day, she is just a vase and can't do anything. This morning, Dai Dai climbed up on top of Desaya refreshed, while Desaya lay on the bed like a puddle of soft mud, with skin all over his body hot and rosy looking like he was both enjoying himself and pretending to be indifferent. It's been three days. My mouth has been tough, but my body has been honest. If you really don't want to follow me, I'll give up. You can commit suicide and I won't stop you anymore. However, I will let your crew bury you with you so that you will not be alone on the road to hell. Dai Dai said calmly while getting dressed. If he still couldn't make this woman recognize the truth after three days of exposure, he wouldn't force it anymore. Anyway, he will have no shortage of women like this in the future. Desaya was just taking advantage of the first woman in Dai Dai's heart, making Dai Dai tolerate it again and again. Even Nami doesn't have such high level treatment, let alone Queen Sweetheart, a female pirate who came back from rape. But now Dai Dai, as the number of killings increases, his feelings will become weaker and weaker. When Desaya heard Dai Dai's words, his pupils trembled and his heart became a little panicked. This is the paramecia slippery fruit, which can make any woman the most beautiful woman in the world. If it is sold to the celestial dragons, it may be auctioned for a high price of more than one billion belly. If you eat it, you might be able to compete with the pirate empress Boa Hancock for the title of the most beautiful woman in the world. If you decide to follow me, this fruit will be given to you. Of course, you can also choose this dagger. Dai Dai took out the slippery fruit and a dagger and placed them in front of Desaya and said in an indifferent tone that three days was the maximum limit he could give. He didn't have as much patience as Crow, and he could survive the Iron Bear for five days and five nights. It only took half a day for Dai Dai to survive Ed Drago. Can't you coax me a little more like before? Desaya said through gritted teeth, then picked up the slippery fruit and bit it down. She had already lost Grandma and Bator, as well as the Candy Pirates. Now she only has Dai Duo as a man. She is not willing to leave Dai Dai to a coquettish bitch like the Sweetheart Queen. She is Dai Dai's first woman, she wants to take it all back. This devil fruit, which is worth more than one billion belly, can barely comfort her grief of losing her grandma. This man still values her a little bit. This slippery fruit is the gift I prepared for you, and you are in the Bado family and can't even save our house. Why do you have any nostalgia for them? Seeing Desaya make a choice, Dai Duo chuckled lightly and dropped his clothes to the ground again. He wanted to study the function of the slippery fruit with Desaya. Because Desaya, who had eaten the slippery fruit, his appearance increased at a speed that could be seen with the naked eye, 
making Dai Dai unable to resist the next round. This will be another full day of research and exploration. The crew members of the Big Daddy Pirates are already used to Dai Dai educating Desaya, his ex-girlfriend, but Nami is the only one who is a little gritty. Isn't it just that it's bigger there, but it's a little taller here, what's so great? Nami, who is now only 17 years old, said with an angry face that she seems to be unfair now. Why is Dai Duo not attracted to her at all? She touched her short orange hair. She seemed to be a bit like a tomboy now. Could it be that Dai Dai liked girls with long hair and mature girls? For this reason, Nami decided to grow her hair long and learn how to dress and groom like the Sugar Queen. She could no longer wear such old-fashioned t-shirts. The next day. When Dai Dai appeared with the extremely beautiful Desaya, even Nami, Queen Sweetheart, and Carmen were moved by it. Iron Bear and the others quickly lowered their heads, not daring to take another look. This captain's woman was so beautiful. They were afraid that if they looked at it for a few more times, they would be beaten up by Dai Dai. Is this still Desaya? Could it be possible to become more beautiful by doing that? The women in Nami looked at the beautiful Desaya a little blankly, and even the female pirates from the original Candy Pirates looked at Desaya's stunning appearance in disbelief. Desaya will be a cadre on the ship from now on. Dai Dai said casually, without giving too much rights, she was just Dai Dai's woman. Although Desaya was his first woman and she also ate the slippery fruit and became a great beauty, her status would only be the same if her strength could not keep up. When Dai Dai didn't go to sea, I was his woman. But now I am the last one to board the ship, and I am a newbie. I hope everyone can give me your advice. Desaya was modest while emphasizing her relationship with Dai Dai, which smelled a little like green tea. She also took a few more glances at the little rival sweetheart queen, and didn't even pay attention to the old-fashioned short-haired Nami. This made Nami clench her fists and shouted in her heart, 30 years in heading, 30 years in hexy, don't bully young girls. In two years, I will be more beautiful than you. Zoro, here are some moves. Dai Dai ignored the sparks of electricity between these women. After being decadent for a few days, he wanted to continue his practice. After seeing Betty Betty's powerful abilities, Dai Dai felt that he was still too weak. These crew members were also ordered by Dai Dai to double their training. It was so embarrassing that they were almost killed by the people with Bello Betty's encouraged fruit power. As long as you can't practice to death, practice to death. The Dreadnought Battleship Saber is a huge sailing ship with three decks. It has a lot of space, and the Dai Dai Pirates currently only have more than 20 people, so everyone has enough space to practice and relax. This sailing ship was used as the main ship of the East Blue Overlord Krieg Pirates, and it could accommodate two to three hundred people at the same time. According to Dai Dai's order, the current Big Daddy Pirates have slowly approached the entrance to the Grand Line, Upside Down Mountain, after leaving Logue Town. But according to the map, there are several small islands in front of the Upside Down Mountain, and there is even a marine branch fortress. And Logue Town is just the nearest medium-sized island in front of the Grand Line entrance, not the nearest island. It's just because of Roger the Pirate King that it became more famous. Captain Dai Dai. The island in front is Warship Island. Nami saw an island that looked like a warship and shouted loudly. Seeing this island meant that we were really not far from Upside Down Mountain. When Dai Dai heard the name Battleship Island, he thought of the Thousand-Year-Old Dragon, but he did not believe that the bones of the Thousand-Year-Old Dragon could be used to make the elixir of life. If there was such a thing, Celestial Dragons would have come to snatch it. Only people from East Blue, the weakest sea, would believe this legend. As for Abyss, who has the ability to whisper fruit, she is of no use to Dai Dui. This devil fruit's ability is very useless. It can only talk to animals, and it can only convey its own voice to the animals' hearts. She cannot read the thoughts of animals, and she must be able to read the voices and thoughts of animals only if they voluntarily communicate with them. It is also unable to hear the voices of humans and some species, let alone conduct complex conversations and commands. This is simply more rubbish than Chopper who ate the Renren Ren fruit and took the form of a common man. The key is that Abyss is weak, has no special abilities, and is too young. She is not suitable for the cruel pirate group called Big Daddy Pirates. So Dai Dai was too lazy to waste time looking for them, not to mention that the thousand-year-old dragon might not have flown back to the warship island yet. Go directly to Upside Down Mountain. Dai Dai has no intention of landing on the warship island, and it is no longer interesting to stay in East Blue. There are not many qualified opponents at all. Moreover, the atrocities committed by the Big Daddy Pirates may have attracted the attention of naval headquarters. They must leave East Blue and enter the Grand Line as soon as possible. 
This way, Marine won't be trapped in East Blue. Otherwise, Naval Headquarters will send a Marine Vice Admiral to stop them in front of and behind the Upside Down Mountain, and the Big Daddy Pirates will sink into the sea. Clear. Although Nami also wanted to board the army ship island and see the characteristics of this island, she did not dare to disobey the order after Dai Dai ordered it. The dreadnought battleship Saber speeds towards Upside Down Mountain. A few days ago, Admiral Nelson Roy of the 8th Branch of the East Blue Marine received an order from the naval headquarters to dispatch all warships in front of the Upside Down Mountain to intercept any pirate group that wanted to pass through the Upside Down Mountain in the past few days. Difference bombing. Big fat man Nelson Roy is already familiar with this kind of mission. Their 8th Branch is East Blue's last line of defense. Like Commander Bryn Bryn of the 77th Branch, he has the highest Commodore rank in the East Blue. Although the rank of the Branch Marine is three levels lower than that of the main Marine, he is still one of the most powerful people in the East Blue. Theoretically, even Smoker, a Marine Master who was demoted from Colonel of the Headquarters to Colonel of the Logue Town Branch, would salute when he saw him. Although within Naval Headquarters, his East Blue Branch Commodore is only equivalent to the rank of a Headquarters Major. Adjutant. Call those bastard Marine mercenaries. This time we will conduct a week-long interception and bombardment. Nelson Roy shouted that he knew that there were some strong masters among the pirates, so in order to reduce Marines' losses, he would recruit some pirate hunters or mercenaries who wanted money rather than their lives to help defend. Yes, sir. The Marine fleet of the 8th Branch immediately began to dispatch, and some mercenaries who were well known in East Blue also boarded the warship. If they independently hunt down pirates with bounties on their heads, they will not only get the bounty from the pirates, but also receive employment money from Admiral Nelson Roy. This has also made some pirate hunters and mercenaries become Nelson Roy's regular customers, and they like this refreshing marine leader. In the eyes of these mercenaries, this job is a hundred times better than being a marine. After all, marine hunting pirates is just a task, but Bailey does not have as much extra income. Although marine is a little envious of the generous income of these mercenaries, every time he fights pirates, mercenaries are the first to fight, and the mortality rate is very high so it is not uncommon for Marine to take advantage of these branches. Among the bounty hunters hired by Admiral Nelson Roy, the most powerful one is Cyclone Eric. He is a user with the Paramecia Scythe Fruit ability, which can highly compress the air to produce a scythe-like slash. It has the power of flying slashes comparable to those of a swordsman. He is more famous in East Blue than pirate hunter Roronoa Zoro. After all, he has been in the industry for several years and is very powerful. Whirlwind Eric is also a lawless person who puts interests first. As long as the interests are sufficient, he will dare to do anything. In the original work, he ruthlessly killed Admiral Nelson Roy and a large number of branch sailors in order to obtain the keel. At this time, in front of Upside Down Mountain, a large number of pirate ship wrecks appeared on the sea. The Marine fleet and Marine mercenaries of the 8th branch had defeated seven or eight pirate groups from Logue Town in the past two days and Tornado Eric was counting his profits from this employment. In just a few days, he had already received more than 20 million belly in bounties and employment payments. He was very satisfied with the bounty. It would be great if wastes like Marine could organize such siege missions more often. Although he is relatively strong, he has to admit that Marine's warships and firepower, coupled with a large number of Marine soldiers, are too beneficial for encircling and suppressing pirates. If he were to hunt down pirates alone, his efficiency would be very low. It usually takes several weeks and a month to hunt down a pirate group, and sometimes he even misses the mark. He didn't dare to grab the faster marine warships, so he could only reach a certain cooperation with marine, so that he could not only make his own money, but also take advantage of marine's warships and military strength. He didn't want to become a pirate, lest he be chased by marines all day long, and he didn't even want to be a marine and be bound by various rules. He just liked being a bounty hunter like this now, freely. Not only has he gained great fame in East Blue, but even the Marine Admiral of the 8th Branch has to show courtesy to him. Eric, the main target this time is the Big Daddy Pirates. Are you sure you can deal with them? If that doesn't work, we can just cover them with firepower first and then accidentally let them leave. Anyway, this mission has been completed well. Admiral Nelson Roy, the fat man, said with some concern that according to the intelligence obtained in the past two days, the captain of the Big Daddy Pirates may be stronger than Colonel Smoker of the Logue Town Marine. This made Nelson Roy a little jealous and scared. You must know that he knows Smoker's true strength. Smoker is a true colonel of the naval headquarters. He studies under the headquarters chief instructor Zephyr, and he is also a Logia demon fruit power. Even Smoker can't deal with Dai Dai, 
so his weakling East Blue Branch Commodore can't even deal with the Big Daddy Pirates. Don't worry, Admiral Roy. With the firepower of your Marines, plus my fruit ability, we will definitely be able to blast the pirate ships of the Big Daddy Pirates into the sea. Then we only need to beat up the drowned dogs. Whirlwind Eric smiled sinisterly on his mean face. He is also a bounty hunter who has learned the true meaning of hit the thieves first and hit the boats first. The dreadnought battleship Saber is moving forward rapidly, pulled by the sea beast Moo Moo. As the Big Daddy pirates get closer to Upside Down Mountain, they become more excited that they can finally enter the legendary Grand Line. This is a place that many East Blue pirates are eager to enter. Entering the Grand Line means that they are finally qualified to rob the great secret treasure left by Roger the Pirate King. As the pirate ship moved forward, the Big Daddy pirates soon discovered that there were more and more wreckage and broken decks on the sea. Is it because of bad luck that the pirate ship crashed into Upside Down Mountain? Nami said doubtfully, because of the huge power of ocean currents in the Four Seas, the seawater in the Four Seas can go against common sense and flow upstream from the Upside Down Mountain and into the Grand Line. Those unlucky pirate ships would crash directly into the Upside Down Mountain and turn into a pile of debris if they failed to grasp the direction under the rapid ocean currents. In the Four Seas, every year there are countless new pirate groups who fail at the first level of the Grand Line. There are scorch marks from artillery bombardment on it, and some of the wooden planks are neatly fragmented. This should be a pirate ship that has experienced a fierce battle, and there may be swordsman-level warriors among the enemies. Beiji Crow just took a few glances at the debris and quickly analyzed part of the information. Swordsman? I really want to fight against such a strong man once. Roranoa Zoro immediately said with a fighting spirit that he has not yet reached the level of a steel-cutting swordsman. In order to move towards the goal of being the world's greatest swordsman, he will duel with all the swordsmen he meets. Get ready to fight. An enemy is coming. Dai Dai's eyes flashed red, he put down the exercise equipment, looked into the distance, and then shouted to everyone casually. Everyone immediately became full of fighting spirit and had an aura that belonged to the strongest pirate group in East Blue. Captain Dai Dai, this is Marine's fleet, and it's a medium sized fleet with nine Marine battleships. Nami, the navigator and lookout, looked into the distance with binoculars and immediately shouted, looking a little nervous. At first glance, the warships on the opposite side are regular marine fleets with sophisticated weapons. When you see the dense gun muzzles on each warship, you know that these are combat warships dedicated to encircling and suppressing pirates, not ordinary cruise warships. It seems that these pirate ship wrecks are the achievements of this marine fleet. Beiji Croton adjusted his glasses and said calmly, and then slowly began to put on his Espadacat claw, preparing for the battle. Is there really a swordsman on the opposite warship? I'm really looking forward to it. Zoro, the three sword style, also smiled and drew out the Ryakai swords, snow and flowers, and looked at the marine fleet that was getting closer. Other crew members also picked up their weapons and entered combat mode. Let Lousy take the first shot. Sonic Edrag immediately stood on the bow of the ship, his mouth began to glow, and he charged up. As the sniper gunner on the ship, he must fire the first shot. Before the dreadnought battleship Saber entered the range of the marine fleet, Edrago had already taken the lead in firing. A blue-white dazzling light wave shot straight towards the marine battleship in the middle. Seeing this scene, the marine fleet also sped up to bring the big daddy pirates within the range of their artillery as soon as possible. The warship in the middle also fired dense sickle wind blades, trying to scatter the sonic laser cannons, but in the end they were unable to disperse them all, and the sonic cannon hit the mainmast of the warship. There was a huge explosion on the warship, and smoke and flames shot into the sky. However, the marine fleet did not retreat because of this. Instead, it continued to accelerate and surrounded them, showing a tendency to close in. And because the two sides were approaching each other, the pirate ships of the Big Daddy Pirates quickly entered the artillery coverage of the marine fleet. Asshole. Hurry up and signal. Let me sink them for this admiral. The fat admiral Nelson Roy yelled angrily. He was almost killed by the remaining sonic cannon. Fortunately, his adjutant saved him in time and saved him from disaster and Tornado Eric didn't even try to save him. This made him very angry. These mercenaries did not protect his employer wholeheartedly. Admiral Roy, watch me avenge you. Tornado Eric glanced at Nelson Roy and shouted nonchalantly. After he saw that the Big Daddy pirates had entered the attack range of the warship, he would also take the opportunity to destroy the pirate ship with the fleet's countless artillery fire. Boat. Otherwise, he would not have the confidence to deal with so many strong men in the Big Daddy pirates. Sickle Wind Blade Flurry. 
dense transparent wind blades, with explosive sounds and a large number of guns, blasted towards the pirate ship of the Big Daddy Pirates. It's actually him. It's Whirlwind Eric, a user with the sickle fruit ability. Kill me. Barrier Dreadnought Battleship. Dai Dai recognized that these wind blades were not the flying slashes wielded by the swordsmen at all, but the ability of Devil Fruit. He immediately put a barrier shield on his pirate ship, and then quickly approached the marine fleet. Command the main ship. He can't run away from this marine mercenary. And the sea beast Moo Moo has dived into the sea to avoid the shells, pulling the dreadnought battleship Saber under the water, and continues to rush towards Admiral Nelson Roy's main ship. Boom. The roar of explosions continued, and the smoke engulfed the entire pirate ship. Kill them. Admiral Nelson Roy and many sailors shouted excitedly. As expected, no rookie pirate group can defeat a regular marine fleet in formation. But the next moment, the dreadnought battleship Sabre rushed out of the smoke intact and continued to rush towards the marine main ship. So many artillery fire and wind blades hit the pirate ship of the Big Daddy Pirates, but it had no effect. This suddenly made Admiral Nelson Roy a little panicked. Eric, I'll leave this to you. After killing Dottie Babaya, I will double your employment fee. Nelson Roy, who was very good at assessing the situation and protecting himself wisely, shouted nervously to Eric, immediately asked his adjutant to protect him, and quickly escaped from the command ship. Only by saving his own life can he continue to enjoy glory and wealth in the future. Damn it, Eric, he said he's so powerful, and now he can't even break through other people's shields. Admiral Nelson Roy cursed secretly as he ran. This East Blue First pirate group is indeed not a pirate group that is easy to mess with. It is the right choice for him to continue fishing and beating up young pirates. As for orders from naval headquarters, to hell with it. Such a powerful pirate group should be left to the marine generals of the Grand Line to deal with it, instead of letting weak marines like them die. Waste. Seeing Nelson Roy boarding the boat and escaping, Whirlwind Eric also cursed in his heart. He also didn't expect that Dai Dai's devil fruit ability would be so powerful. Not only could it cover an entire pirate ship, it could also block the artillery bombardment of nine marine warships and his countless sickle wind blades. Seeing this situation, Eric also had the idea of retreating. The Big Daddy Pirates are indeed the strongest pirate group in the East Blue, and Eric will not risk his own life just for Admiral Nelson Roy's double commission. Just as he was looking for the retreating boat, the dreadnought battleship Sabre, which had a sea beast pulling the boat, had collided with the Marines' command ship, and the follow-up battle had officially begun. Roranoa Zoro immediately jumped on the warship and looked around for the powerful swordsman, who sent out the flying slash. When Dai Dai approached the encirclement of the marine fleet, the 40-meter barrier sword had already struck the four marine warships on the right. A single encounter had turned the four warships into wreckage, and countless sailors fell into the sea. The terrifying power of this knife almost made Eric, who was about to flee, almost incontinent. It seemed that they had really encountered a big terror. Sonic Ed Drago on the other side also used a sonic cannon to pierce a warship. Seeing this, the remaining three warships began to turn crazily, trying to escape. The Big Daddy pirates were too terrifying and they couldn't deal with them at all. Admiral Nelson Roy, who had already withdrawn several hundred meters, turned pale with fright when he saw that his marine fleet was being destroyed and sunk like tofu. Call for support, call for support. East Blue's 8th Branch Marine Fleet failed to encircle and suppress the Big Daddy Pirates and suffered heavy losses. Five warships have been destroyed. We may be annihilated. Hurry up and send the nearest support from the Grand Line. The troops are coming. Admiral Nelson Roy picked up the phone and called Naval Headquarters frantically for help. He was rowing a boat with his own hands, just to quickly get away from the demons like the Big Daddy Pirates. Colonel Hina, who is cruising in the waters of Drum Island, is heading to the entrance of the Grand Line. Please protect your personal safety, Roy Commodore, and wait for support. The operator at Naval Headquarters immediately responded, but the waters of Drum Island are so far away from Upside Down Mountain that even if they could fly, they would not be able to provide support. Admiral Nelson Roy hung up the phone angrily, cursed, and then continued to frantically row with his adjutant and several soldiers to escape from the sea. The other three warships could not escape Dai Dai's claws, but he did not sink them directly. Instead, he asked the crew members such as Ghost Man Agent, Steel Bear, and Desire to go up and kill people to practice their skills. Even Nami and Carmen were thrown in to see Marine's blood. And Zoro had already started fighting with Tornado Eric. After knowing that the person who issued the Flying Slash was not a swordsman, Zoro had lost most of his interest. But Eric's sickle windblade inspired him a lot, 
and he began to develop various flying and slashing tricks, and slowly advanced to the direction of a swordsman. As for Beji Crow, he, the Cat Brothers, and the others were riding fast motorboats to chase Admiral Nelson Roy and the others who had slipped through the net. Moreover, the cruel crow did not give Admiral Nelson Roy a chance to beg for mercy. He even ignored the temptation of large amounts of money and directly killed them all. Dai Duo was on the Marine main ship, watching the fierce battle between Zoro and Tornado Eric with an expressionless face, and had no intention of taking action for the time being. The wind blade emitted by the user with the sickle fruit ability is quite powerful. If it were a master with a powerful talent, its upper limit would be very high, and it would be a huge wind blade with a wave of its finger. After eating this devil fruit, the starting point is comparable to that of a swordsman with flying slashes. If he could develop a powerful wind blade that could split hundreds of meters with every wave of his finger, then he would be the best in the new world. Dai Dai even felt that this ability should not be called the sickle fruit, but the wind blade fruit. Dai Dai did not interfere with Zoro's combat understanding state and gave him a little more time to learn more sword skills. Captain Dai Dai, we found some imprisoned pirates on the ship, do we need to release them? Queen Sweetheart suddenly ran over and said to Dai Dai. She knew that Dai Dai liked to recruit some powerful pirates, so when this happened, she immediately asked Dai Dai to deal with it. Really? Who has the highest bounty on his head? Are there any people with abilities? Dai Dai said with some interest that he had already encountered most of the pirate groups that appeared in the original work, he didn't know whether there were other powerful pirate groups in the huge East Blue. Um. The highest bounty is 9 million, it seems there is no demon fruit power. Queen Sweetheart said a little bitterly, she felt that there should be no pirates Dai Duo liked among them. Even the bounty prisoners such as the Needle Sword Clown, Swordsman Goreth, and Catman Brothers are just pirates of the Dai Duo pirates. That's right. How talented is the pirate group that can be caught by these trash? Give Moo Moo some extra food. He has been working hard recently, so let him have a good meal. Dai Dai said indifferently that he didn't want to recruit these losers, and even wanted to streamline the number of pirates on the ship. It can't even defeat the people with the power of encourage fruit. It's useless no matter how many of these minions there are. It's probably just a matter of conqueror's hockey in the future. And Dai Dai has been exploring whether he has the potential of conqueror's hockey. Without the blessing of such qualifications, could I really reach the top of the world? After undergoing body piercing in Dai Dai, I was a little shaken. But he knew that only truly lawless and unscrupulous people could become first generation conquerors hockey awakeners without blood inheritance. People like four emperors, Kaido of the Beasts, and Whitebeard were all born from the grassroots, and their parents were not well known powerful people. But they all also awaken conquerors hockey. Thinking of this, Dai Dai felt that he was still a little constrained now. Even Whitebeard and Red Hair, who are known to be loyal and heroic, have their own iron rules. If others touch them, they will die, and they must not be violated. Perhaps Dai Dai should also have his own absolute iron rules, and anyone who violates them will be killed. Every king is very conceited and persistent. As long as he wants to do something, no one can stop him, not even his friends and relatives. Perhaps it is this mentality that allows people to awaken to conquerors hockey. Queen Sweetheart couldn't help but tremble when she heard that Dai Dai decided their fate without even looking at the pirates. Yes. Captain Dai Dai. Queen Sweetheart said seriously, even though she was already Dai Dai's best friend, she still didn't dare to be arrogant. And Zoro has slowly figured out Eric's tricks and shortcomings, and quickly defeated Eric from behind. The sickle fruit activates the wind blade, which can be produced by swiping your finger forward. If the opponent is behind you, you must turn around to counterattack. However, it may be that Eric is too developed, which is why this shortcoming appears. Dai Dai didn't believe that he couldn't activate the wind blade by swiping his fingers backwards. This guy Tybi Baloo immediately grabbed a sea stone handcuff and went up to handcuff Tornado Eric. Next, if Captain Dai Dai doesn't take action to subdue him, he may have to leave it to Lord Crow to slowly concoct this marine mercenary. Naval Headquarters Marine Ford. A sturdy old marine with short white hair. Even though his beard has turned white, he still can't hide the powerful aura about him. Sangoku, look, it's because you didn't give me a vacation, so I didn't have time to go back and clean up East Blue's mess, that's why East Blue got rampant little pirates like the Big Daddy Pirates. Marine hero Garp the Fist cursed and complained to Marine Marshal Buddha Sangoku, looking very unhappy and even a little angry. After learning that the Big Daddy Pirates had destroyed the 16th and 8th branches of East Blue, the leaders of these two marine branches, Colonel Mouse and Nelson Roy Commodore, 
had both died honorably. This makes Garp the Fist very angry, very angry. The kind of anger that can't be calmed down even without a three month vacation and a thousand packs of senbei. He does not allow the peaceful East Blue to have such lawless and brutal pirates appear. The weakest sea is just a contemptuous name among pirates. Ordinary people and marines prefer to call the East Blue the most peaceful sea. The credit for all this must of course go to Garp the Fist who often returns to East Blue to visit his grandson. How long have you been on vacation? It was not long after you came back from vacation that the big daddy pirates were established. However, they rose too quickly. In just one or two months, they entered the Grand Line. The pirates on their ship are all relatively well-known bounty criminals from East Blue. This deity Babaya does have some skills and can subdue so many pirates. Buddha's Sengoku looked at the information about Dai Dai. He was originally a mute from East Blue Logue Town, then the strategist of the Bator family, and finally the captain of the Big Daddy Pirates. He successively conquered Captain Crow of the Black Cat Pirates, Captain Edrag of the Edrag Pirates, and Captain Bear King of the Poker Pirates. And East Blue's pirate hunter Rorano Azoro. After killing the Krieg Pirates, the overlord of East Blue, he subdued the second in command Kim Jin and the third in command Taibi Baloo, and then destroyed the strongest dragon pirates in East Blue. This record can indeed dominate East Blue, the most peaceful sea. In fact, if it weren't for seven warlords of the Sea Jinbei, Garp the Fist would have put an end to the dragon pirates long ago. It's just that the world government thinks that the dragon pirates are a pirate group affiliated with Jinbei. So the Dragon Pirates' exploitation of the Kokoja Sea can be considered a legal plunder by the Seven Warlords of the Sea Jinbei. This guy is too murderous and must be eliminated as soon as possible. Garp the Fist said solemnly, according to the intelligence, Dede Babaya had already killed many pirates when he destroyed the Krieg Pirates and the Dragon Pirates, and his hands were stained with blood. Coupled with the destruction of the Logue Town Underworld Bado family and the two marine branches of East Blue, Dai Dai's crimes are too numerous to list. The vice admiral on duty at the general staff department has sent Captain Marine Hina from our headquarters to intercept the big daddy pirates. Buddha's Sengoku suddenly frowned and said, he felt that the staff's arrangement was a bit wrong, and Colonel Hina seemed not necessarily able to deal with Dadie Babaya. As Marine Marshal, he doesn't have that much time to deal with small pirate groups like East Blue, and he doesn't need to deal with these small things. You're the only one who's still called the resourceful general. Didn't you read the intelligence? Smoker's intelligence said that this little thief Dai Dai can do two-color hockey, has sea stone weapons, and his devil fruit ability can turn him into a barrier giant of dozens of meters. You call Colonel Hina right now and ask me to go back and deal with him, and approve my vacation by the way. Garp the fist cursed loudly. It wasn't that he looked down on Colonel Hina, but that Dai Dai was really a bit of a pervert. He actually came into contact with hockey in East Blue. You know, how many pirate groups from all over the world, even when they reach the end of the Grand Line, Sabodi Archipelago, don't know what hockey is. And his grandson, Monkey D. Luffy, has become more and more pirate minded in the past two years. He must go back more often and teach this little bastard a lesson, lest Luffy really goes to sea to become a pirate. It's too late now. It's estimated that the Big Daddy pirates have entered the Grand Line now. If you rush back now, you don't even know which island he is on. Buddha Sengoku said a little angrily, ignoring Garp's application. Later he would ask his subordinates in the staff department to remind Colonel Hina to be careful when encountering the Big Daddy Pirates. However, the Grand Line has seven routes, so it's unlikely that the Big Daddy Pirates will encounter Colonel Hina's route by chance, right? Does that mean you won't criticize me for my lies? Garp the Fist glared at Buddha Sengoku with a black look on his face, then angrily grabbed all the senbei on the table and left the marshal's office with an angry look on his face. Buddha's Sengoku also stared at Garp's back with wide eyes. This guy is just an old bastard who came to ask for a vacation and free food and drinks. He shook his head helplessly, and then planned to increase Diddy Babia's bounty a little more. The pirate who already has the two-color hockey and the powerful devil fruit ability in the Grand Line is not only cruel and easy to kill, but also very cold-blooded, making him a real danger. Therefore, the bounty must be increased to make Marine pay attention to the danger. It is best to attract bounty hunters to surround and kill the Big Daddy pirates. With a wave of his hand, Dai Dai's bounty skyrocketed to 100 million belly, making him one of this year's supernova candidates. Destroyed two Marine branches, countless kills on hand, plus dual color hockey and devil fruit abilities, this die stack is really worth the price. If he can successfully reach the Sabodi archipelago without failing on the Grand Line, 
then he will be this year's supernova. And in the rainlands of Alabasta. As Nico Robin's investigation into Daddy Babaya deepened, her expression became more solemn. Being able to defeat Colonel Smoker, who had the Logia smoke fruit, showed that his strength really exceeded her expectations. Did you join the Grand Line as the strongest pirate group in East Blue? Nico Robin murmured that she originally wanted to meet Dai Dai alone, but now that she knows the full strength of the Big Daddy pirates, she does not dare to face this brutal captain who has killed countless people alone. She didn't understand why someone like Dai Dai would have anything to do with Ohara, and she also knew her and Sand Crocodile's identities. Mr. One can't be deployed around Sand Crocodile, so let the teams of Mr. Two and Mr. Three protect me to see this Daidu, and transfer other teams to nearby sea areas to perform tasks. In order to find out the secrets of Dai Dai, Nico Robin took out most of the combat power of Baroque Working Group in one fell swoop. In addition to the boss Sand Crocodile and Mr. One, she has mobilized the entire seven warlords of the sea's forces. She doesn't believe that she can't handle the Big Daddy Pirates, a rookie pirate group that has just entered the Grand Line. In order to give Crocodile an explanation, she left the Alabasta Rainland on the grounds of recruiting the strongest pirate group in East Blue. In front of the Upside Down Mountain, the sea beast Moo Moo looked at the rapid ocean current going upstream, and showed a humane expression of fear. Moo, just protect yourself. Leave the pirate ship to us. Dai Dai never thought that this cow and sea beast could protect the dreadnought battleship Saber. He would protect his own pirate ship himself. So, kids, today we officially enter the Grand Line. Dai Dai shouted, making all the crew members of the Big Daddy Pirates excited. Yes. Captain. Nami began to command the other crew members, steering the pirate ship into the turbulent countercurrent waters, and loosened the traction rope with the sea beast Moo Moo. And Beiji Crow was at the stern of the boat, looking at the cyclone Eric dragged in the seawater. Now we're going up upside down mountain, I hope you survive. Crow looked at the prisoner coldly. After Eric was caught, he had been dragged behind the boat by Crow to kill his arrogance. I join. I join. Please let me go. Whirlwind Eric shouted feebly. He was given a few more mouthfuls of seawater, soaked in the seawater, and cuffed by sea stone handcuffs, which made him weak, and a feeling of extreme despair emerged spontaneously. It was obvious that he had been shouting for several hours to surrender and join, but it seemed that Crow had not been heard. Now that he heard the upward current that was about to enter the upside down mountain, if he continued to be dragged in the seawater, he would definitely be thrown to the mountain wall and turned into a piece of meat on the channel of the upside down mountain. How much he longed to live at this moment, he never wanted to try this inhuman punishment again. He was already full of fear of the big daddy pirate ship, leaving a shadow that could never be erased for the rest of his life. At this time, seeing Eric who was almost done, Dai Dai came over. At the last moment when the dreadnought battleship Saber entered the upstream ocean current, Eric, who was extremely pale with fright, was finally pulled out. From now on, you will be a member of the Big Daddy Pirates. Please obey orders, understand? Dai Dai slowly untied Eric's sea stone handcuffs and the hemp rope around his body, and then said calmly to the sickle fruit user. I know. Captain. I will never betray the Big Daddy Pirates in this life. Tornado Eric was already in tears at this moment. He immediately cried and expressed his loyalty to Dai Dai. He hugged Dai Dai's thigh without any image and shouted that he finally survived in the hands of these demons. I just like obedient crew members, now go change your clothes and follow us into the Grand Line. Dai Dai picked up Eric, straightened his wet clothes, and said with a smile. At this moment, Dai Dai changed from a demon captain to a gentle and good boss. Thank you captain, I will definitely obey you. Whirlwind Eric has been completely impressed by Dai Dai's methods. At most, he will be a little resentful towards Crow, but for Dai Dai, the captain, he is absolutely convinced and grateful. After asking people to take Eric down, the pirate ship finally rushed up to the upside down mountain. It trembled violently, making Dai Dai immediately prepare to protect the pirate ship at all times. Barrier Dreadnought Battleship The huge barrier instantly enveloped the Dreadnought Battleship Saber. In the turbulent ocean currents, the pirate ship had violent collisions with the Channel Mountains many times, causing the pirate ship to almost roll over. It's really a dangerous and big project. Dai Dai finally saw why Upside Down Mountain was the first hellgate for the new pirates from all over the world. Damn it. The countercurrent channel in Upside Down Mountain is not as short as in the animation. Dai Dai estimated that the upstream channel alone was more than 300 kilometers long. They rushed for almost three hours in the super turbulent sea current with a speed of about 120 kilometers per hour. 
based on the navigation knowledge Dai Dai learned and combined with his geographical knowledge from his previous life, he estimated that the Grand Line is roughly three or four latitudes north and south of the equator. That is to say, the Grand Line is at least 600 to 800 kilometers wide, and the two calm belts are also on both sides of it, each accounting for more than 100 kilometers of width. Damn it! If Laozi didn't have the barrier fruit, he wouldn't be able to break through this upside down mountain. Dai Dai cursed loudly, saying that all the ocean currents in the upside down mountains in all directions must reach the center point before they can all flow into the Grand Line. Moreover, they must take a sloped triangle line instead of a straight line. This distance is longer than half the width of the entire Grand Line. Using the barrier fruit for three or four hours continuously to protect the huge dreadnought battleship Sabre made Dai Duodu break into a cold sweat. The crew members were also shocked and turned pale. They knew the Grand Line was dangerous, but they didn't expect that the upside down mountain in the first level was already so dangerous. How many pirate ships can sail upward for three or four hours in a turbulent ocean current with a speed of more than 100 km per hour? These wooden pirate ships only need a few collisions to turn them into a ball of debris in an instant. Sure enough, every pirate group that arrives at the Grand Line is a pirate group with full luck points. These fallen pirates were rushed into the Grand Line and became the personal salary of Crocus, the tower guard of Twin Capes. Otherwise, why do you think Crocus has been guarding the Twin Capes for so many years and still has no worries about food and clothing, reading newspapers leisurely? There is even a lot of wealth to buy medical books, buy precious medicinal materials, treat and transform the huge island whale laboon. Maybe laboon's nutritional rations also have part of the credit of Crocus. When reaching the top of Upside Down Mountain, the pirate ship collided violently again, but successfully changed its direction and rushed downward at a faster speed. The four ocean currents from all over the world converged into one, making the ocean currents faster, and Dai Daidu had to work hard. Ah! The girls on the boat were shouting loudly. The current speed of the dreadnought battleship Sabre has exceeded 180 km per hour, and the mast is a little bent. Without the protection of the barrier fruit, a single collision would turn this pirate ship into a tattered wreck. How lucky are those pirate groups who successfully entered the Grand Line to not collide with the mountain wall of the upside down mountain channel once? Ah! Captain Dai Dai! There is a dead end ahead! It's over! Why is there a wall ahead? Nami was so frightened that she burst into tears. She thought she was about to see the exit, but she didn't expect that there was a huge mountain blocking her face. There was no possibility of escape. Maid. Everyone, hurry up. Dai Dai shouted angrily, he did not expect to encounter the island whale laboon crashing into the mountain. If it hits the mountain at this speed, even if it is protected by the barrier fruit, the huge inertia will make these crew members disabled or even die directly, and the hull will also be damaged. Will disintegrate. Barrier Susano's hand. Dai Dai roared angrily, and the huge barrier shell stretched out two giant hands, grabbing hard at the upside down mountain walls on both sides, and decelerated wildly, with sparks flying all the way, which was dozens of times more exaggerated than Spider Man pulling a line to stop a train. A huge deep mark was made on the mountain body of the upside down mountain channel, and countless dust was kicked up. The continuous high intensity bursts caused Dai Di's nose to overflow with a trace of blood. The other crew members looked at Dai Dai worriedly. Desaya and Nami wanted to step forward to take care of Dai Dai, but Dai Dai's ferocious expression and bulging muscles prevented them from disturbing the man. Ed Drago had already run to the bow of the boat and quickly started to charge up his energy. The newcomer Eric also ran to the bow of the boat. He didn't want to die either. Captain. Open a hole. Lousy is going to smash this roadblock. Sonic Adelau's mouth was shining, and he shouted anxiously to Dai Duo. The wind blade on Whirlwind Elric's finger was also ready to be activated. Now only the two of them have strong long range attacks, and most of the other crew members are close combatants. In the midst of the high intensity explosion, Dai Dai forced himself to have a thought and opened a little barrier. The fierce wind immediately rushed in, almost knocking down Nami and other weak crew members. Sonic Cannon, Sickle Great Wind Blade. A sonic laser beam and a huge transparent wind blade blasted towards the Black Mountain in front. Boom. Howl. Woo. A huge whine was heard, and the Black Mountain began to roll and rise, and a huge eye and mouth appeared. Only then did the crew of the Big Daddy Pirates discover that the Black Mountain was actually a huge living island whale. Dai Dai was also a little exhausted and finally slowed down the pirate ship. However, the speed of the ocean current was still very fast, 
so Dai Dai had to continue to maintain his forced deceleration and had no time to deal with the island whale. Ouch! Laboon, the island whale, changed from howling in pain to roaring in anger. It wanted to completely smash the pirate ship that dared to hurt it. It opened its huge mouth, its huge fangs and sharp teeth, and its cold light showed that it was not a vegetarian. Of. Uh. Just when Dai Dai was about to give up and continue to slow down and hit him directly, the angry laboon suddenly became quiet and dived to the bottom of the sea in the blink of an eye. The dreadnought battleship Sabre finally broke out of the rapid downhill channel of Upside Down Mountain and entered the Grand Line. Survived. The crew members of the Big Daddy Pirates shouted excitedly, but Dai Dai was so tired that he sat down and started breathing heavily. Today is the most tiring day since he went to sea. It's a hundred times more tiring than attacking the Krieg Pirates, the overlord of East Blue. Captain. We successfully entered the Grand Line. The crew shouted excitedly to vent their high emotions after the disaster. But the next moment, a huge black shadow surged under the sea surface again, and this huge island whale emerged from Monado again. Its eyes were already as big as the dreadnought battleship Sabre. Careful. Everyone immediately entered a fighting state. The size of this island whale was so big that they looked so small in front of it. This was a huge island whale that was 400 meters long. Dai Dai also stood up again, but his muscles were still shaking a little. He looked at the island whale without fear. At this time, Laboon, the island whale, seemed very quiet, and his eyes became clear, no longer as angry as before. She must have been sedated by Crocus. Dai Dai took one look and made a judgment. The ship doctor of One Piece should be in Laboon's belly now, right? Crocus, in addition to being a powerful doctor, didn't expect that he could also modify Laboon's belly and live in the belly of a whale. Laboon. I know you understand me. I know where Brook is. You tell Crocus to come out and see me. Dai Duo shouted to the pair of giant island whale Laboon, and he showed a smile. He wondered if he could coax the Pirate King's ship's doctor onto the ship. If Crocus, an old timer, is on board, even if he only disembarks when he reaches the Devil's Triangle, the safety of the Big Daddy Pirates during the Grand Line will undoubtedly be improved countless times. Crocus is not only highly skilled in medicine, but also has great sailing experience and combat prowess. He even visited the Grand Line and New World with the Roger Pirates, and even went to Raftel. This kind of treasure like talent really makes Dai Dai salivate. Ouch. The quiet island whale Laboon suddenly became excited again when he heard Brooke's name. Even the sedatives on his body couldn't suppress his excitement. The huge waves shook the dreadnought battleship Sabre, and everyone on board looked at this crazy island whale a little nervously. Quiet. Laboon. Don't you want to see Brooke? Dai Dai shouted in an angry tone. Sure enough, upon hearing Dai Dai's words, Laboon immediately calmed down and looked at Dai Dai with big eyes pitifully and expectantly. At this time, it seems that Laboon's call and Laboon's emotional ups and downs were felt. An old man with a flower on his bald head, wearing glasses in a pink shirt with yellow and green patterns in the middle, emerged from the island whale Laboon's head, appear on. He also carried some harpoon weapons on his back. As soon as he appeared, his expressionless and cold eyes made the atmosphere freeze. That powerful aura made Beiji Crow and Zoro and the rest of the crew break into a cold sweat and feel a sense of suffocation. So powerful. Definitely a super strong person. Hey. Crocus. Take your momentum. Don't scare the newcomers of the era. Dai Dai stood at the front, facing Crocus's cold eyes, and an invisible aura spontaneously emerged from his body to fight against Crocus. Dai Dai doesn't think Crocus is an easy old man to deal with. He can follow Roger pirates around the Grand Line and arrive at the final island. There is no doubt about his strength. Back then, the Roger pirates and the Whitebeard pirates fought for three days and three nights. Crocus also participated in the battle and fought to the end. In the end, he did not suffer any serious injuries or loss of strength. After returning to Twin Points, I hunted giant King Squid, swam in Laboon's stomach acid, and my body resisted the gunpowder shells of the Baroque Works Company without getting hurt. Moreover, the entrance to the Grand Line at Twin Points has been safe and sound for so many years. Judging from various achievements, it is clear how strong Crocus's combat effectiveness is. Kid. You actually know my name? Have you been to Grand Line before, or is there an elder in your family? After Crocus lost his cold eyes and aura, he immediately turned into a little old man with an erratic personality. This is my first time here. Not only do I know your name, but I also know your past with Laboon. Dai Dai said calmly, and then turned on his observation hockey to sense the One Piece ship's doctor and feel his strength. 
Using observation hockey casually is a rude thing to do. Crocus smiled. He didn't expect to meet a new pirate who learned hockey at Twin Capes, the starting point of the Grand Line. It was really unprecedented. However, he quickly realized that this kid knew about his past with Laboon. How old is this kid? I had quit the Roger Pirates more than 20 years ago and returned to Twin Capes to work as a lighthouse keeper again, taking care of Laboon. At that time, this kid hadn't even been born yet. Dai Dai didn't pay attention to Crocus's micro expression. He was just a little curious as to why this Pirate King's ship's doctor could become the keeper of the Twin Capes lighthouse in an upright manner. Didn't Marine put a bounty on him? But he has been a ship's doctor for the Roger Pirates for three years, so there is no reason why he hasn't been discovered by Marine yet. Whether it was the Battle of Etville with the Golden Lion Shiki's air fleet or the three day and three night fierce battle with the Whitebeard Pirates, Crocus participated in them all. Besides, the Roger Pirates are the focus of the world government. How could Crocus not be exposed? How did a big shot like Senior Crocus manage to work as a lighthouse keeper here without being wanted by the world government? Dai Dai said with some doubts. Anyway, he had been with the Bado family for two years and had been a pirate for a month or two. He had never seen a reward order from the Crocus Pirates, not even a reward from the crew of the Roger Pirates. Rarely seen. Do you really know me? Hearing Dai Dai's question, Crocus also showed a serious expression. He felt that the young pirate had recognized his identity. Yes, I know a little bit about you, the Lumba Pirates and that pirate group. Dai Dai had just finished speaking. After hearing the name of the Lombard Pirates, the island whale laboon became excited again, and asked Crocus to constantly comfort the excited whale. Even the Lombard Pirates know it, it seems you are really not simple. Crocus said a little solemnly that not only did this young man know how to use hockey, but he also knew the Lombard pirates from more than 50 years ago, which really shocked him. You must know that back then, even the Roger pirates had not heard much about the Lumba pirates. This was a pirate group from a previous era. When Brooke and the others disappeared, Roger was just a fledgling newcomer. It's still not as simple as your identity, you were even more extraordinary. Back then, you could have boarded that pirate group for three years in search of traces of the Lumba pirates, but in the end you still couldn't find any clues about Brooke and the Lumba pirates. I wonder if you can get on my pirate ship again now. I can definitely help you find Brooke. You can even take Laboon with you. Maybe you can become an official crew member of the legendary pirates for the second time. Dai Dai said with confidence, and the ambition revealed in his words surprised Crocus. This guy also wants to become the pirate king. Kid. Do you know the consequences of irritating me by talking nonsense? Even the Roger pirates haven't found Brooke, so why can you find them? Crocus no longer tried to hide his secrets from Dai, and directly showed his cards, acquiescing that he was indeed a crew member of the Roger Pirates. It would be great if Dai Dai knew the real news about the Lumba Pirates, otherwise, he would let this new pirate group see what the Pirate King's ship doctor is. Feeling Crocus' aura become cold again, the crew members of the Big Daddy Pirates nervously clutched their weapons, ready to activate their Devil Fruit ability at any time. The Lumba Pirates have been destroyed but Brooke has been successfully resurrected due to the underworld fruit, and is now trapped somewhere. I wonder if you would like to take Laboon and follow us to find him? After finding him, you can choose to leave or stay. But in the meantime, you will become our temporary ship's doctor and guide us in the practice of two-color hockey. Of course, when we find a new ship's doctor, you will also help train him. Dai Dai sensed Crocus's strength and put a lot of pressure on him. He was worthy of being the ship's doctor of the Roger Pirates. He has been on the Pirate King's ship for three years and should be stronger than several crew members who have been specially trained by the Straw Hat Pirates for two years. Even if he doesn't have the strength of the three big canvans, he at least has the strength of the six volleys. Ordinary supernovas can't defeat this old man. And as a doctor, Dai Dai didn't believe that Crocus could only cure diseases and not know how to use some poisons. After hearing what Dai Dai said, the island whale laboon was a little depressed and a little excited. It didn't expect that the Lombard pirates had been wiped out, but now it was eager to set off immediately to find Brook who was still alive. At this moment, a cow and sea beast rushed down from the upside down mountain channel in a daze, and directly bumped into Laboon, almost knocking him out, and a big bump appeared on his head. It took a while to wake up, and then swam to the dreadnought battleship Sabre in tears, as if it had found an organization. Kid, give me a range and time. Otherwise, I won't leave Twin Capes easily. My old bones can't stand deception and long voyages. Crocus glanced at this silly sea beast, then narrowed his eyes and said to Dai Dai, I didn't expect to hear the news about Brooke at this age. 
it really makes people unable to retire with peace of mind. But feeling Laboon's excitement, he had to fulfill Laboon's wish. Then work hard again. Let's hope this guy doesn't cheat on him. Within a year, I will definitely give you an answer within the Grand Line, without entering the New World. Dai Dai showed a smile, as long as Crocus stayed in the Big Daddy Pirates for a year and a half, he would be able to squeeze all the benefits from Crocus and surpass him in strength. If it's just these conditions, I can promise you. But you can't ask me anything about the Roger Pirates unless I want to tell you. After Crocus thought about it, he agreed to Dai Dai's conditions. As long as it was within the Grand Line, it seemed acceptable. It was not as dangerous as the New World. He also had some confidence that he could deal with the dangers of the Grand Line. And in one year, even if this guy is lying, he can stop the loss in time. However, if you really deceive him, then call Pluton Rayleigh in the Sabaudi Archipelago and kill this deceitful guy. Then welcome aboard, Senior Crocus. I promise you and Laboon that we will find Brook. Dai Dai jumped on Laboon's head, shook hands with the temporary ship's doctor respectfully, and patted Laboon's mountain like head comfortingly. After we find Brook, I hope you won't interfere with our whereabouts. Crocus once again reminded emphatically that he could feel that the atmosphere of this pirate group was not as harmonious as the Roger pirate group. Of course, but I will try to gain your approval. Dai Dai smiled and said, a Grand Line veteran successfully boarded the ship. Even if Crocus will not participate in the battle, his medical skills, navigation experience, and two-color hockey experience are all a good asset. And the sea beast Moo Moo below heard that his captain had recruited another 400-meter large island whale, and his heart suddenly felt cold. Was he going to be unemployed again? Just go through a topsy-turvy mountain and become unemployed? The crew members of the Big Daddy Pirates were also frightened by Dai Dai's trick. Their captain seemed to have deceived a great person. This old man is a member of One Piece Roger's pirate crew, or One Piece's ship's doctor. This temporary ship doctor has a big background. Above Twin Point's lighthouse, Crocus is entertaining the crew of the Big Daddy Pirates, and is preparing to pack up his medical books and medicinal materials before boarding the ship. To be honest, at the age of over 70, he really doesn't want to leave this old place. Recently, he stayed in the belly of Laboon the Whale for a month or two, constantly transforming and treating Laboon. But this time, in order to fulfill Laboon's wish, he had to make another trip. I hope that this time, as Dai Dai said, Brook's whereabouts will be found. At this time, the Seagull News Bird of the World Economic News Agency flew over. As a person who likes to read newspapers, Crocus bought a newspaper. In Laboon's belly, he hadn't seen the latest newspaper for a month or two. After Beiji Crow saw it, he also bought a few copies. They were not short of money anyway, and there were no news newspapers from the East Blue newspaper here on the Grand Line. They were usually newspapers owned by Big News, Morgans. When Crocus glanced casually and saw the latest news, his eyes narrowed slightly, and then a hint of gloom appeared on his face. At the same time, he also saw Dai Dai's latest reward order. He was shocked. What a killing. The most brutal rookie pirate group in East Blue massacred the Krieg pirates, the Dragon pirates, destroyed the underworld Bator family, and destroyed the 8th and 16th branches of East Blue. Dady Babia's hands alone were stained with more than 2,000 lives. The captain of the Big Daddy Pirates, Big Daddy, Dede Babaya, has a bounty of 100 million baileys, life or death. Is this still new? This is simply a devil. Thinking of Dai Dai's respectful smile before, Crocus was suddenly filled with disgust. In an instant, he no longer wanted to follow Dai Dai out to sea. He doesn't like a pirate group that is keen on killing. If he boarded their pirate ship, he might also be killed in large numbers. And he doesn't want to protect a demon pirate group that grows up. This is not the seed of the times that Roger wants to wait for. When he boarded Roger's pirate ship, the strength of Roger's pirate group had reached its peak and its intimidation was extremely high. No pirate group dared to provoke them. What's more, Roger didn't have long to live at that time, so he had been saving time and trying to find the whereabouts of the historical text. So after Crocus came on board as the ship's doctor, they had almost no real battles except for two big battles with Golden Lion Shaki and Whitebeard. Most small battles did not require Crocus as the ship's doctor. However, he also learned a lot of combat abilities and techniques from Roger, Rayleigh, Kazuki Odin and others. Seeing the change in Crocus's face, Beiji Crow also showed a joking smile. It seemed that the captain was going to be defeated this time. This old man should be another kind-hearted and bottom-line doctor. Crocus returned to the lighthouse with a solemn expression, and looked at the big daddy pirates who had started to have a noisy dinner, 
his eyes had become much colder. Dai Dai soon felt the changes in Crocus, his face froze for a moment, and then slowly became expressionless, and the barbecue in his hand became like chewing wax. When he saw the newspaper in Crocus' hand, he had a little guess in his mind. Crow took the newspaper, silently handed it to Dai Dai, and then stepped aside as if he were watching a show. As for the other crew members, they seemed to feel the sudden change in the atmosphere. Everyone's eating and drinking slowed down, and the atmosphere became more serious. Dai Dai quickly read the reports about him in the news. Although it was slightly exaggerated, it was basically true. He just didn't expect that naval headquarters had increased the bounty for him so much. Dai Dai also fell silent and stopped talking. He just wanted to see how the One Piece doctor wanted to go back on his words and refuse the conditions he had agreed to before. After a long silence, Crocus also considered whether he could take Dai Duo by force and force him to reveal Brooke's whereabouts. But obviously, he is not completely sure, not even 60% sure. He smelled something similar to Douglas Bullet on Dai Dai. He was just as crazy and powerful as the devil's descendant. Dai Dai, I'm very happy that you can invite me on board, but I don't like the fighting style on your ship. When people get old, they don't like to fight and kill, so now I want to change the conditions. I'm afraid I can't board your pirate ship. However, as long as you reveal Brooke's whereabouts, I can still try to meet the other conditions you mentioned before. Crocus spoke first. He had already made up his mind that he would never get on this cruel pirate ship. Hearing Crocus' unfaithful words, even the road idiot Roranoa Zoro raised his head, with a look of impatience on his face. Ho ho. Then what do you have to make sure that we can learn the advanced two-color hockey and make others become a professional doctor? Dai Dai didn't expect such a good toolman to run away like this, and he couldn't help but feel a pity. I can give you some of Hockey's training experience and some medical manuals. These should be enough for you to learn? Crocus said expressionlessly, if it weren't for Brooke's whereabouts, he wouldn't want to hand these things over to this demon pirate group. And he even has a collection of Pluton Rayleigh's voice when he taught Shanks and Buggy Hockey, which is one of the ways he learned. Not enough, really not enough. Since Senior's words don't count, then I just want to test Senior's strength. Then let's have a pirate duel. The winner gets everything. Only those who are evenly matched in the end are qualified to negotiate terms. Dai Dai pulled out his third generation ghost. Since you have written Hockey's experience in medical manuals, let's go straight to the fight. If you can defeat Crocus, you might be able to directly obtain all of the opponent's treasures. And Dai Dai also wants to know where his current strength is. With the barrier fruit, he is confident that he is invincible. Let's have a fight now and negotiate terms later. He is indeed a violent person. Come on then, young man, the winner gets everything. Crocus also chuckled and pulled out his sea beast harpoon. In order to find out Brooke's whereabouts, he wanted to see how strong this most evil newcomer in East Blue was. Within a few breaths, his sea beast harpoon had slowly wrapped around the dark armament hockey. Without twos and threes, how dare you go to Lang Shan? Crocus is not just a top doctor who only treats diseases. It's really a strong armament hockey. Dai Dai did not dare to be careless at all and became extremely serious. This old guy must be the strongest opponent he has ever encountered since he went to sea. Dai Dai pulled out the third generation ghost in his hand and covered it with a shallow armament hockey, but in the end he still lacked a lot of foundation. Kid. Be careful. I once learned the more advanced armament hockey technique from a powerful samurai. If I break your sword, don't blame me, this old man. Crocus smiled slightly, saying that he was just dealing with a fledgling pirate, and he thought he could handle it with ease. Thank you for the reminder. Dai Dai raised the third generation ghost and rushed over. He collided fiercely with Crocus, creating waves of air. Kid, your armament hockey seems to be like this. The jet black harpoon in Crocus's hand, with great force, swung away Dai Duo's demon sword, and there was a flowing hockey on his armed harpoon which made even the third generation ghost scream. Dai Dai immediately jumped back dozens of steps horrifyingly, looking at third generation Kitetsu whose hands were still trembling, as if he was still being destroyed inside. The terrifying emission hockey can actually bypass Dai Duo's armament hockey defense and directly hit the inside of the sword. Dai Dai once again felt the weakness of this third generation ghost. He put away third generation Kitetsu with no expression on his face and threw it directly to Roronoa Zoro behind him. Sure enough, after possessing the barrier fruit, even a famous sword will hinder his own strength. Now he finally knows that Marine Admiral Akainu Sakazuki, after getting the Logia Lava Lava fruit, completely abandoned his powerful swordsmanship. 
because this famous sword may not be as good as his devil fruit ability. Dai Duo looked at Crocus and began to cross the fingers of his hands. Barrier Susano initial stage. A spherical shield immediately appeared around Dai Dai, completely protecting him, and then two giant barrier hands with spikes extended out from both sides of the spherical barrier. Come again. Dai Dai controlled his two giant hands, and with the force of falling into the sky, he hit Crocus hard, with no intention of holding back. Clang. Crocus chose to use the sea beast harpoon entangled with armament hockey, hoping to forcefully break Dai Duo's devil fruit ability. He believed that with his emission hockey, he would be able to break through this transparent barrier that looked like glass in one go. Boom. Crocus was hit hard and flew out, but he quickly got up. This kind of minor injury did not exist for him. He looked at Dai Dai's intact transparent barrier with disbelief. Why is it so hard? There's no reason why even emission hockey can't defeat a rookie pirate's devil fruit ability. Why can't his emission hockey break the inner structure of the barrier? Crocus, who did not believe in evil, continued to launch an intensive attack on Dai Dai. Ding. XN. Dongshan whether it is collapsing, plucking, pressing, covering, picking, or piercing, Crocus's armed harpoon cannot pierce or break Dai Duo's barrier. This made him deeply doubt whether he was already this old. It seems you can't do anything to me. Dai Dai kept waving his giant barrier hand to fight back. Even combatants like Kazuki Odin couldn't break the defense of the barrier fruit. How could a ship doctor like Crocus break it? However, Crocus's observation hockey and dodge speed are very fast, making Dai Dui miss repeatedly. It seems that in the Suzano form, bigger is not always better. Barrier Peerless Long Sword Dai Dai immediately adjusted his strategy and turned the giant barrier hands into two barrier swords, which were faster and easier to wield and more lethal. If you want to destroy the terrain, you may need the huge Suzano, but if you want to fight one-on-one, -on -one, you must take into account both speed and attack power. Your devil fruit ability is so strong. Crocus found that he couldn't break Dai Dai's spherical shield. He could only see if he could drain Dai Dai's physical strength until he couldn't activate the devil fruit ability. Your bicolor hockey is also very strong. Dai Dai is still launching his own attacks and continues to skillfully control his barrier sword. He has already planned to give up third generation Kitetsu, concentrate on using his barrier sword, and devote himself to developing the ability of the barrier fruit. Dai Dai kept fighting with Crocus, which made him extremely excited. Now he finally has a qualified opponent that he can use his full strength to deal with. Unlike those little pirates in East Blue, he killed them instantly with one move. Barrier thrust. Barrier fist. In the void, barrier cones and barrier fists suddenly appeared, attacking Crocus again and again, but his armament hockey was also very strong and could not hurt him at all. The fierce battle between the two lasted for more than five hours. The open space in Twin Capes has been beaten to pieces. The crew members of the Dai Dai pirates are hiding far away, while Laboon, the island whale, is already writhing anxiously in the sea. It doesn't know why the two people are fighting like this. Most of Dai Dai's barrier moves were avoided or resisted by Crocus. In the end, both sides were out of breath, and neither could do anything to the other. Dai Dai saw that the speed of the old man Crocus finally began to decline significantly, and observation hockey was no longer so focused. Barrier Ball He finally used his ultimate trap, trapping the slowed Crocus with a barrier ball. Then the two entered into a crazy struggle between violently shrinking the barrier ball and resisting the contraction of the barrier ball old guy. My barrier ball has no solution. Even if it consumes you, it will consume you to death. The air inside will become less and less. Dai Dai laughed wildly and was in a stalemate with Crocus, while the crew of the Big Daddy Pirates, under the command of Beiji Crow, had evacuated Crocus's twin cape residence. Even if you start digging deep into the ground, you will find all of Crocus's treasures and snatch them all away. I really underestimate you. I admit that you are strong. But if you let me go and tell me Brooke's whereabouts, I will give you the teaching voice of One Piece's right hand, Pluton Rayleigh. Otherwise, your bandit men will never be able to find that thing, and kid, don't forget that I still have contact with the rest of the Roger Pirates. In the fiercely shaking barrier ball, Crocus steadily resisted the shrinking barrier ball, but he couldn't break the barrier. As an old man, he couldn't help but become a little nervous. Getting old is still getting old after all. He is becoming increasingly unable to do what he wants, and his strength has actually regressed so much. If he had been more ruthless and not entangled with Dai Do from the beginning, but used his speed to kill the crew of the Big Daddy Pirates, he might have been able to force Dai Do back. Do you really have this kind of voice? 
but I can't find it? Is it hidden in Laboon's belly? After hearing Pluton Rayleigh's instructions, Dai Dai couldn't help but his eyes lit up, and he could guess that Crocus had hidden good things in the belly of Laboon, the island whale. Then you devil fruit brat, do you dare to get into Laboon's belly? Crocus snorted. If Laboon dived into the sea, Dai Dai's demon fruit power would be easy to die, and he could see Dai Dai's desire for the high level hockey. Like Bullet, he was a pirate whose power was paramount. You can do anything for power. As long as there is a way to become stronger, they can communicate or trade well. Hearing Crocus's words, Dai Dai's eyes showed a trace of thought, as if he was considering the chances of finding the sound shell that Crocus mentioned in Laboon's belly after killing Crocus. Kid, you can get so many things with just one piece of information from Brook. You should be satisfied and don't do anything too extreme. An old friend of mine will come to me to talk about old times in a while. Crocus was still holding on to the barrier ball, preventing Dai Dai from shrinking. He could feel the oxygen in the air beginning to decrease, but soon he felt the shrinkage force of the barrier ball disappearing, but he still could not forcefully break through. He is really an old man who can see through people's hearts. Dai Dai grinned and said, Crocus's so called friend was not afraid of threatening him, maybe it was Copper Jabba, the Pirate King's left hand. However, Dai Dai feels that it is indeed worth it to exchange a piece of information from Brook in exchange for Pluton Rayleigh's hockey to teach Yinbei. But now, how can both parties ensure that the transaction is successfully completed under the premise of security? As for the things in Crocus's residence in Twin Capes, they have been robbed by the Big Daddy pirates, so naturally they belong to them. Now trade your life and Brook's news for that Yinbei and your hockey experience, including the emission hockey usage skills. Of course, no one knows the authenticity of Otobi and the authenticity of Brook's news. We can only bet on the other party's pirate character. As for whether to believe it or not, it depends on everyone's judgment. Anyway, I agreed to this deal, but I just don't know if you are willing to believe in my character. Dai Dai thinks that in this kind of pirate deal, do some despicable pirates really need to keep their promises? However, people who often keep their words will probably have little chance of awakening conquerors' hockey. This may be what Charlotte Linlin said. Pirates must also be moral. Only those who have reached a certain level of courage will know the importance of this kind of morality. And if some people, after awakening conquerors' hockey, become a sinister villain or are afraid of being beaten, and lose their original beliefs, their courage may no longer grow, or even disappear. Although you are cruel and cold blooded, I believe in you and I know that you are not such a man with evil intentions. If I really misjudged you, I will admit it, of course, this also proves that you are nothing more than that. Sooner or later, they will fall under the tide of this era. Crocus said lightly, he had experienced Dai Dai's look from Bullet. This kind of person will gain fame sooner or later, but it will definitely be a bad name. Haha. <laughs> Although you have already broken your promise once, I still choose to believe you, old timer. Dai Dai directly untied the barrier ball and released Crocus. He looked fearlessly at the old guy who could explode at any time. You have half an hour, of course. You can also let Laboon take you to escape without knowing Brook's whereabouts. Dai Dai chuckled and said, although he was eager to get Emission Hockey's training method, there was nothing he could do if Crocus wanted to run away. However, being able to steal most of Crocus's stuff isn't a loss, it's just a lower return. HMPH. For an arrogant person like you, I hope you can escape Marines encirclement and suppression. Crocus snorted, jumped on Laboon and disappeared. Back then, a man as strong as Douglas Bullet was surrounded by Marine's Buster Call, and then defeated and arrested. A pirate group as brutal and flamboyant as the Big Daddy Pirates probably won't be able to go far. Not long after time passed, Crocus soon appeared on Laboon again. Come on. Come up and trade. Crocus stood quietly on Laboon's body, waiting for Dai Dai to come up. In addition to ensuring his own safety, he also wanted to see how much courage and courage Dai Dai had. Dai Dai chuckled, and a barrier ladder appeared, extending directly from Twin Capes to Laboon's back. Senior, are you testing me, or are you afraid of me? Dai Dai slowly walked up to Crocus and showed a dangerous smile. Stop talking nonsense. This is Rayleigh's teaching sound, and my hockey training experience. Tell me the whereabouts of Brook, and this will be yours. Crocus said in a bad tone with a sound shell in his left hand and a pamphlet in his right hand. As a doctor, he likes to record all kinds of knowledge, even this hockey practice is the same. Unlike other pirates, he doesn't like to read and write, so he relies on oral teaching. At the same time, Crocus pressed the bell, and a magnetic voice came out, as if he was seriously teaching someone. Haha. 
It's so refreshing. After Brooke's resurrection, he has been lost in the thick fog in the Devil's Triangle. If you can encounter a ghost ship, maybe Brooke is on it. Dai Dai laughed and said truthfully, then took the sound shell and the training manual, and then walked slowly back to the shore on the barrier stairs. Dai Dai was not lying. He had never awakened Conqueror's hockey. Perhaps he was too careless and calculating, and ultimately lacked the courage to do so. After Laboon heard about Brooke's whereabouts, he immediately became excited, and the sea surface was churning violently. It turns out to be there. Laboon, be quiet. Let's leave first. Crocus disappeared on Laboon's back again, and Laboon quickly dived to the bottom of the sea. On the shore of Twin Heads, the crew members of the Big Daddy Pirates did not expect that recruiting a temporary ship doctor would develop into this. Captain Dai Dai, have we offended the ship's doctor of the Roger Pirates? Nami asked a little timidly. The fierce battle between Dai Dai and Crocus made them dumbfounded. And Roranoa Zoro also felt his weakness again. Is this the true power of hockey? Seeing the large and small huge craters on the ground, these were all directly blasted by Crocus with hockey. Even huge rocks were directly blasted into powder. Even Beiji Crow felt an invisible terrifying pressure on his body. The danger of the Grand Line seemed to be far beyond their imagination. Haha. <laughs> what expressions do they have? They are just remnants of an era. There is nothing to be afraid of. And don't let this shock you, there aren't many pirates in the Grand Line who know how to hockey. Now I just want you to experience the battle in New World. Dai Duo held a musical instrument and a pamphlet. Although he let Crocus and Laboon go, at this moment he felt the pride in his heart filling his entire body. This may be due to the excitement of finding the cultivation method of advanced hockey, or it may be due to another jump in mentality. Even if he offended the Pirate King's ship's doctor now, he might be retaliated by the remnants of Roger's pirate group, but he was not afraid. What about the remnants of One Piece? What about the Revolutionary Army? What about Marine? Just keep killing it. Even if you die on this road, you won't hesitate. Some people may think this is arrogant, but those who are not arrogant are not worthy of awakening conquerors hockey. Dai Dai's crazy laughter, coupled with the vague momentum and pressure in the air, made Zoro and Crow and the crew feel a bit oppressive. Not enough. Dai Dai said with cold eyes that it might take a desperate battle close to death to detonate his momentum. Ready to go. Dai Dai gave the order, and all the crew immediately packed up their things, boarded the ship and set sail. Seeing the island whale laboon leave, the sea beast Moo Moo immediately excitedly installed the traction rope by himself, he is also a useful handsome boy. Captain, I found some charts and strange pointers in the old man's collection, how should we go now? Beiji Kela is now more and more surrendered to Dai Dai, respecting the captain more and more in his heart, and his tone has also changed a lot. Captain, my navigational needle is malfunctioning. Nami said anxiously. When she took out the navigation pointer that East Blue brought out before, she found that it kept spinning around. You don't need the navigation pointer anymore, throw it away. Grand Line only has record pointers and permanent pointers. The recording pointer can record the magnetism between the islands of the Grand Route and accurately guide you to the next island. However, the magnetic force of each island is different, and the recording pointer needs to record locally for a period of time. It will point to the next island only after the magnetic force is fully charged. The permanent pointer will always point to a certain island and will never change. Dai Dai picked up a transparent spherical record pointer and explained to his crew that there was only one pointer in the record pointer. Now it is also erratic, as if swinging back and forth in seven fixed directions, which represent the seven initial routes of the Grand Line. Once you choose one of these directions, you can usually follow this route all the way to the Sabodi Archipelago. Dai Dai also saw a record pointer with three small balls. This was an upgraded version of the record pointer needed to enter the new world, to deal with the new world where the magnetic field was more disordered. Unexpectedly, this old guy has a lot of treasures. He is worthy of being the ship's doctor of one piece who has reached the final island. Is this a permanent pointer? Dai Dai picked up an hourglass shaped pointer again. A glass ball was sandwiched between a wooden round plate and supported by three small pillars. There was only one permanent pointer inside that would not change direction. There is also a place name engraved on the side of the wooden board above the permanent pointer. Alabasta. Alabasta. Dai Duo looked at the letters on the permanent pointer, and then read out a familiar name. He suddenly showed a surprised expression. Immediately I picked up several other permanent pointers, Drum Island, Gaia Island, Sky Island, Water City, Country on the Bridge to Jirawolf, Sabodi Islands, the Fishman Island. 
Damn it. Isn't this the route Crocus took after joining the Roger Pirates? This is also the route Crocus chose for the Straw Hat Pirates. Dai Dai shouted in shock, this old guy actually made a permanent pointer? And Crocus actually has permanent pointers to some other islands. Haha. <laughs> Made. Sure enough, grabbing Crocus is the right choice. Dai Dai burst out laughing, but none of the bumpkins from the Big Daddy Pirates knew much about the permanent pointer, so they could only watch Dai Dai laughing wildly. Dai Dai is very excited now. He feels like he just came out of the novice village and defeated a big boss, which directly revealed so many good equipments and made him take off. After laughing wildly, Dai Dai also calmed down. Looking at these permanent pointers and a constantly shaking record pointer, which one should he choose? When he saw the last permanent pointer, he showed a firm and meaningful smile. Now go farm Crocodile and Enel, the strong Logia players, and he might not be able to defeat them. So he chose to wander for a while to let himself and his crew grow up and continue to hone his hockey. With these permanent pointers, he no longer has to take only one route, and Marine can't even try to block him on one route. Nami. Go to the course to the far left of the record pointer. Dai Dai did not take the middle of the seven routes, even though the fourth route was the route taken by Roger the Pirate King and the Straw Hat Pirates. But with these permanent pointers, he chose to take the fourth route after he had enough strength. By then, he could defeat these two Logia demon fruit powers. Yes. Captain. Under the tug of the sea beast Moo Moo, the dreadnought battleship Saber rushed directly to the upper left and chose the first route on the left. Don't ask why it's the first one on the left and not the first one on the right, just ask how it feels. Dai Dai feels that there are men he needs on this line. This may be the guidance of fate. The permanent pointer held in Dai Dai's hand allows him to keep trying and making mistakes and keep returning to Novice Village. This permanent pointer is engraved with Twin Capes, which is Twin Capes. Both Roger and Crocus have this permanent pointer, allowing them to travel back and forth to the starting point of Twin Points multiple times. Roger can visit all the islands on the seven routes of the Grand Line. This permanent pointer of the Twin Capes also plays a lot of role. Dai Dai looked at the Endless Sea, with a firm smile on his face at this unknown route. The familiar plot gave him too many confident ideas, and he felt that it was difficult for him to grow in his courage. What he needs is unknown exploration and fearless adventure. When he jumped out of the fourth route of the original plot, Dai Dai felt that his spirit had been sublimated again. That's what it feels like. Dai Dai was in a surging mood and raised his 40 meter barrier sword towards the sea, slashing continuously. On this day, the overly excited Dai Duo stood on the bow of the ship and swung the barrier sword tens of thousands of times. Finally, he collapsed on the deck exhausted, but his face showed endless satisfaction. The sea beast Moo Moo had already been scared to death. A big knife was swung up and down on its head, causing it to explode at a speed of 120%. After Dai Dai fell, it also softened, and it only I want to be a salted fish and float slowly. Seeing Dai Dai getting stronger and stronger, this also stimulated the crew members Zoro, Crow, and Akin to constantly increase their training intensity, just to catch up with the captain. In the captain's dormitory, Desiah and Queen Sweetheart took care of the sleeping Dai Di. This was the first time that Dai Di fell into a deep sleep due to excessive training. In the past, Dai Dai was always wary of the world and could not trust anyone. Now, it may be because of the growth in strength and courage that he has let down his guard against his crew. This may also be the absolute confidence in his observation hockey and barrier fruit. On the first island of the first route, it is also an island full of pirate hunters, hunting the new pirates who enter the Grand Line. A pirate group from my hometown of East Blue? This is fate. On the island, a man wearing a black cloak suddenly saw the pirate ship in the pirate flag that had just appeared on the sea. On the sea, a sea beast appeared pulling a huge three-decker sailboat. The black pirate flag on the mast was buzzing. It was a symbol that was not a skull. It was very unique and full of mechanical layers. On Martel Island, some pirate hunters also saw this pirate ship. Hey! As this the big daddy pirates who just entered the Grand Line and already have a bounty of hundreds of millions? A bounty hunter wearing a cowboy hat and carrying a revolver said in a fearful tone. The big pirate with a bounty of hundreds of millions is not an enemy that they, the bounty hunters on the initial island, can deal with. The newspapers say this demon has killed over 2,000 pirates and marines. He really is a crazy little guy. Some bounty hunters had already smelled the danger and immediately fled. Only some bounty hunters who wanted money rather than their lives dared to look for opportunities near the port. Martel Peak is one of the original seven wine mountains. 
It is tied with Whiskey Peak, the first island of the fourth route, and is even more famous than Whiskey Peak. Due to some geographical reasons or a competitive mentality, the first route on the left and the first route on the right are the first choice of many cruel pirates. The pirates operating in these two routes are generally relatively powerful pirates, usually from North Blue and West Blue. The initial seven wine mountains include Martell Peak, Bacardi Peak, Chivas Regal Peak, Whiskey Peak, Jack Danny Peak, Champagne Peak, and Remy Martin Peak. In the Grand Line, these seven islands are all famous bounty hunter islands, and only some rookie pirates from all over the world are completely unaware of the situation. Among them, there is a vodka kingdom in the middle and rear section of the Martell Island route. It is the hometown of the Four Emperors and Kaido of the Beasts, a famous war country. Initially, Seven Wine Mountain was known as an exciting island where wine and danger coexisted. This is a paradise for bounty hunters in the second tomb of the Four Seas Rookie Pirates. Don't think that just because you have broken through the first tomb in Upside Down Mountain, you dare to proudly say that you want to conquer the Grand Line. The Grand Line, known as the Graveyard of Pirates, cannot continue sailing just by shouting dreams and passion. Without strength, you are just a lamb to be slaughtered. Facing the extremely evil, treacherous and despicable bounty hunters and pirates, you can only continue to live if you become stronger, more cruel and cold-blooded. Pirates are really not a house game. The huge sea beast pushed away the two pirate ships on the main seat of the port with a fierce look on its face. The huge fearless battleship Saber, protected by the huge barrier, had no intention of slowing down and crashed into the port, knocking the two pirate ships away. Each pirate ship crashed into half of its side. The sound of the pirate ship's cabin board breaking continued to be heard. In the end, the two pirate ships were directly swung away, slowly rolled over, and floated on the sea. None of the pirates and bounty hunters on Martell Island expected that the Big Daddy pirates would be so rampant. As soon as they arrive, they must be given a blow. Mad, you dared to overturn our boat, kill me. The captains of these two pirate ships instantly became red-eyed. Pirate ships were their lives. If they dared to ram their ships, they would directly declare war with them. Amidst the angry shouts of the two captains, the pirate members of the two pirate groups angrily drew their swords and guns and charged at the Big Daddy pirates. Welcome to the first killing of the Grand Line. Remember, don't die here. Dai Dai grinned and said to the main crew members such as Pirate Hunter Zoro, Beji Crow, Ghost Man Agent, Whirlwind Eric, Sonic Ed Drago, and Steel Bear. Women such as Desaya, Sugar Queen, Nami, and Carmen are standing on the boat, and they are not required to participate in the battle for the time being. However, as Dai Dai's women, the two demon fruit powers, Desaya and Sweetheart Queen, took the initiative to join the battle, and Dai Dai did not refuse. A woman with such awareness made Dai Dai smile. As for the pirate minions such as Hypnosis Master Zangao, Catman Brothers, Tybee Baloo, Swordsman Goreth, Needle Sword Clown, and Pigjack, they were also sent out to fight by Dai Dai. It was a real sifting trip. Not every crew member can be illuminated by the aura of the protagonist group and enjoy the aura of immortality like the Straw Hat Pirates. Join the Big Daddy Pirates. If you don't get stronger, you will die. If you are unlucky, you will die. With the sudden war between the Big Daddy Pirates and the two pirate groups, many bounty hunters grinned and began to fish in troubled waters and conduct secret attacks. Soon, Jack, the pirate gangster of the Big Daddy Pirates, who had a bounty of 3.2 million baileys, was shot down by a team of bounty hunters, and then his head was quickly beheaded. A bounty hunter also wants to quickly evacuate the battlefield. However, a barrier tyrant sword fell from the sky and struck diagonally. Three bounty hunters were cut in half on the spot, their blood and internal organs splashed all over the ground. A corner of a building in the port was completely cut off, and it collapsed in an instant. Although we cannot guarantee the life of every member, we will definitely pay with blood. Dai Dai jumped off the towering dreadnought battleship Saber, and then looked at these hyena-like bounty hunters and pirates with an expressionless face. These despicable old fools are always ready to launch a surprise attack, just like the hyenas that attack Lychee at any time, fierce and direct to the point. At this time, on a high-rise building in the distance, a man wearing a black cloak couldn't help but smile when he saw that this newcomer from East Blue was so domineering, decisive and cruel. It seems like East Blue hasn't seen such a big pirate in a long time. He barged into the port domineeringly, started fighting at the slightest disagreement, and was very powerful, killing people with his attacks. To be honest, he has been playing overseas for several years, and he feels that he is completely inferior to the new king of East Blue. Every day is a fork in fate. Will I meet the real captain today? 
This man raised his favorite gun, Qianlu, and quickly aimed it at Dai Dai under the ultra-long field of view of the monolithic telescope. I wonder if this new king is lucky enough to survive under his sniper rifle. Come down. This man comes from the east blue of the weakest sea. He is known as, Otanu, Van Oka. He has a bounty of 64 million baileys. He is 26 years old this year, but he is still hanging around in the front section of the Grand Line. As for the small East Blue pirate group he originally belonged to, they had all been wiped out long ago, and now he was the only one left. He struggled to survive on the Grand Line. He knew very well that without a group of strong partners, it would be impossible to continue sailing on the Grand Line. And it is impossible for people without a strong destiny to break out of their own world. Clang. X3. Dai Dai had just brutally hacked a pirate captain to death when a sense of danger suddenly struck him, making his hair stand on end. However, a barrier instantly appeared in front of him, blocking three bullets. The three bullets were aimed at his forehead, throat, and heart. They were truly fast, accurate, and ruthless. Dai Dai's observation Haki immediately sensed the direction of the bullet, and he quickly rushed over. A powerful Yinbi sniper must be eliminated. Otherwise, the other crew members of the Big Daddy Pirates will be in great danger. When he quickly approached and saw the familiar running figure, he was stunned for a moment. Impossible, how could he appear here? Dai Dai shouted in his heart. When he saw Van Oka's appearance, he couldn't believe that this veteran figure of the Blackbeard Pirates would appear on the initial island of the Grand Line. However, Dai Dai was only shocked for a moment and quickly recovered. Now Van Oka was his enemy. If you dare to shoot and sneak attack Dai Dai, then be prepared to die. Shoot it. Shinso. Dai Dai raised his right hand and pointed it at Fan Oka. A sharp barrier spike extended at an extremely fast speed, stretching hundreds of meters in an instant, and penetrated all the way towards Fan Oka. Dai Dai felt that Bartolomeo's development of hundreds of meters of barrier stairs in the original work was a waste of energy and he had not yet developed these extremely lethal offensive weapons. Just when the spikes were about to reach Van Oka's back, the guy unexpectedly swerved to the right and avoided the long spikes that penetrated his heart. The spikes instantly penetrated the ground, leaving a deep hole. Is it observation hockey or sniper intuition? Seeing Van Oka dodge the blow, Dai Dai continued to chase after him. He was indeed a crew member that Blackbeard valued, and he did have some ability. Clang. X3. Three more shots were fired, causing Dai Duo's pursuit speed to slow down a bit. However, Van Oka who did not hit the target this time, ran for a while and stopped in an open space. Waiting quietly for Dai Dui to catch up. Captain Dai Di, do you believe in fate? Seeing Dai Dai chasing after him aggressively, Fan Oka spoke first before Dai Dai could speak. Ho! My destiny is in my own hands, and your destiny is also in my hands now. Dai Dai heard that Fan Oka seemed to be interested in looking for Mingzu, and he immediately showed some interest. However, Van Oka dared to shoot him twice. If he didn't give him a good answer, he would stick Van Oka's famous gun, Qianlu, into his mouth and fire seven shots in a row. Damn this guy. Captain Dai Dai's destiny seems to be very strong. I wonder if you were missing a sniper on your ship? It seemed that he felt a hint of murderous intent from Dai Dai, but this made Van Oka even more satisfied. This was the captain he wanted. Van Oka snipers and kills the target he likes, not only to test the target's strength and destiny, but also to show his own strength to the target. If the target is dead, then of course there is nothing to say. But if the target survives, then it meets his target criteria. After all, this is the initial island of the Grand Line. He, a pirate with a bounty of 64 million, is like a boss. Now we just want to see if this goal has the courage and courage of a hero. Betrayal is death on my ship. Dai Dai glanced at Fan Oka, and then said lightly, it seems that Fan Oka has not yet obtained the teleportation fruit ability, and his strength is just like this. Although he has some potential, it is not necessary. Of course, my captain. I believe in my destiny. I believe in your destiny even more. Fan Oka slowly took off his hat and saluted Dai Dai, expressing his surrender. Dai Dai didn't expect to conquer Blackbeard's initial crew, which was too dramatic. However, I remember that Blackbeard Teach always had zero bounty in the original book, and it has not changed even more after becoming seven warlords of the sea. It wasn't until after the Summit War, when he became the new four emperors, that Blackbeard's bounty soared to 2,247.6 million belly, and then within a year, it soared to 3,996 million belly. Blackbeard, who had an estimated zero bounty, 
also relied on his strong strength to conquer these initial crew members. Of course, it's also possible that Blackbeard subdued these crew members one by one with the temptation of taking away Devil Fruit's ability. Dai Dai is now the most famous rookie king in the world this year. He has already offered a bounty of hundreds of millions when he first entered the Grand Line. No matter how you look at it, he looks like a captain with unlimited potential. The key is that he is still very young. It's not surprising that this kind of monster newcomer can attract some villains to seek refuge with him. After accepting the addition of Fan Oka, Dai Dai returned to the port with this new sniper with a bounty of 64 million baileys. Is this guy going to become the number two person on the ship? At this time, the fighting at the port was already very fierce, because Dai Dai went after Fan Oka, which made these bounty hunters even more excited, and they all started to hunt down the bounty criminals of the Big Daddy Pirates. It's best to leave before Dai Dai comes back. Earning him 10 to 20 million is enough. With a scream, the Needle Sword Clown with a bounty of 9.9 .9 million baileys was also killed by these crazy bounty hunters from the Grand Line. His body was chopped into pieces and his head was snatched away. Steel Bear saw that another crew member of the original Poker Pirates had been killed, and he immediately went crazy. Three of the five Poker Brothers were already dead. The A Card Skunk has been hacked to death by Dai Dewey. Today, Jack and the Needle Sword Clown were also cut into pieces by bounty hunters. Now he is the only one left, the Big Bear King and Sweetheart Queen. The crazy Steel Bear, with its Steel Fruit ability activated at full frequency, turned hot and red, and rushed towards these bounty hunters. It ran rampant along the way, killing many people, and even wafted out the smell of barbecue meat. In the first battle, two members of the gang died. Dai Dai has brought Van Oka back to the port battlefield. The quality of the bounty hunters here is many times better than the garbage at Whiskey Peak. No wonder Van Oka is looking for targets on Martell Island. Seeing that a member was killed again, Dai Dai didn't have much trouble in his heart. Because this is a pirate journey that puts your life on the line. The deaths of these weaklings are also chosen by fate. Van Oka said calmly, while he was also observing the strength and potential of the crew members of the Big Daddy Pirates. The permanent pointer of the original Seven Wine Mountain can be purchased in the Bounty Hunter's Dark Market? Dai Dai turned to Fan Oka and asked. He had just heard Fan Oka say that Fan Oka had been on the initial islands of the Seven Roots in the past few years. Bounty Hunters even have fixed passenger ships that transport guests back and forth on these initial islands to make money. There seems to be the shadow of the post underground emperor, the sea transport king, behind them. In recent years, I have also heard that Whiskey Peak on Route 4 has been controlled by a gangster organization called Baroque Cooperative. Van Oka has not been to the Bounty Hunter Island for a long time. If the captain is not in a hurry to enter the New World, I have a few permanent pointers of the original Seven Wine Mountains. Van Oka still looked expressionless and indifferent. He took out a few permanent pointers from the package and said calmly to Dai Dai. Dai Dai didn't expect that the Grand Line had so many permanent hands. Damn it, you can only follow the record pointer. These are all lies. They are just bullying newcomers to the pirate group for not being sensible. There is no way to get a permanent pointer by bullying newcomers. At this moment, on the fourth route, Nico Robin was using Whiskey Peak's permanent pointer to return to the initial island to see if he could intercept the Big Daddy pirates. Members of the Baroque Working Society have a large number of permanent pointers, and almost every one of these cadres has an Alabasta permanent pointer. The islands within the sphere of influence also have a large number of permanent pointers to facilitate the return of managers. While Dai Dai watched his subordinates fighting with bounty hunters and pirates, he considered Fan Oka's words. We are looking for a ship's doctor recently, do you have any suggestions? Have you ever met a more reliable doctor in Shiju Mountain? Dai Dai looked at this guy Fan Oka, and naturally thought of several initial crew members of the Blackbeard Pirates. Shinigami Poison Q, from North Blue, has a bounty of 72 million baileys. He is a more dangerous person than Van Oka. He should be in the Grand Line by now. Devil Sheriff Lafayette, who was born in West Blue and has a bounty of 42.2 million baileys, was expelled for excessive violence in West Blue and did not know whether to enter the Grand Line. Fighting champion Giza's badges, with a bounty of 20 million baileys, was born in the Grand Line, but now he doesn't know where he is. A few years ago, the stupid king of Sigu Island, a major medical country, implemented the policy of encirclement and suppression of doctors, expelling a large number of excellent doctors and retaining only 20 top doctors. There should still be a few outstanding doctors stranded or hiding on the islands near Sigu Island. Fan Oka thought for a moment and then said slowly, this news was quite popular in the bounty hunter circle back then. 
I heard that many pirate groups and bounty hunter teams took the opportunity to recruit these outstanding doctors. There are even countries from other sea areas that directly come to Sigu Island to poach people, but the most terrifying ones are the underground emperors who kidnap many doctors and enter the New World. Especially the big handed mortician Drago Peklo, who stole many excellent doctors to work for him. After all, organ trafficking is also one of the main side jobs of this underground dark emperor. His main business is in the field of killers, including murder, kidnapping, and funerals. Human trafficking and organ trafficking are all side businesses that make money. These are good suggestions. However, have you ever heard of a doctor named Shinigami Poison Q? A sickly man on horseback has a bounty on his head, and his bounty seems to be higher than yours. Dai Dai is also very interested in the doctors in Wapal 20. They are said to be top doctors who can even cut off a person's head and save his life immediately. The superb medical skills are amazing. If you build up your own power, you might be able to rob the Doctor 20. The captain actually pays attention to that sinister and ruthless old bastard? However, that guy is indeed very strong, and like me, he is also a guy who believes in fate. The captain wants to recruit him. Fan Oka seemed to recall some bad memories. Poison Q, a bastard, liked to hand a basket of apples with bombs to his targets as soon as they met, and there was a high proportion of bomb apples in these apples. This is how he tests a person's luck. Only those who survived were qualified to talk to him. Poison Q believes that everything is destined, and he also hides a lot of strength. He is a truly ruthless character. Not many people dare to mess with this young and senile sick old bastard. Dai Dai is suspected that Poison Q had now eaten the Paramisha disease fruit, which was why Blackbeard Teach valued him so much. After all, among the original Blackbeard pirates, the ship's Dr. Poison Q had the highest bounty. The bounty of Captain Blackbeard Teach was always zero before Summit War. Later, Blackbeard gave Poison Q the sick old horse named Zhuangzwang, and ate the fantasy beast species, horse fruit, and Pegasus form. It can be seen that Blackbeard attaches great importance to Poison Q. That guy has a lot of hidden strength, isn't he a very good crew member? Do you have any way to know which route he is on now? Dai Dai grinned and said, Ordinary doctors don't have much fighting ability and he needs a ship doctor who is ruthless and has superb medical skills. Trafalgar Law, who is from North Blue like Poison Q, I don't know if he is going to see now, otherwise Dai Dai would really want to try to recruit this guy. However, Luo has had a small team of his own since he was a child, and he will not succumb to others so easily. And this guy is also a dark and arrogant person. Even if Dai Duo uses defeating Doflamingo as a reason, there is not much chance of recruiting him. If the strength was equal, Trafalgar Law might draw his sword and cut Dai Dai into several pieces. Unless Dai Dai is strong enough to crush Trafalgar Law, making Luo feel that Dai Dai can defeat Doflamingo, maybe then Luo will join Dai Dai. Now Dai Dai doesn't know if Op Op Fruit's space cutting power can cut through his barrier shield. If bug abilities such as Op Op Fruit and Gate Fruit are the nemesis of barrier fruits, then Dai Duo will have to find a way to deal with them. If they are not one of your own, then try your best to kill them. If the captain wants to recruit that guy, he can issue a mission to find him in the underground world, but I think those intelligence organizations must have information about such a bounty criminal. The price of this information will not be low. Of course, the price will generally not exceed 20% of the reward. Van Oka said slowly, according to the current bounty of Poison Q, the price of 20% would already exceed 10 million bailey, which is comparable to the initial auction price of some sharp knives. Hey, it's just bailey, we have plenty. Wait a minute and you go find out the whereabouts of Poison Q, and I'll deal with these miscellaneous fish first. Dai Dai said casually, and then jumped to the battlefield at the port. Because he saw more and more bounty hunters joining the battle, and he didn't want to train all his troops. Military training also requires a step-by-step -step approach. You can't treat every crew member as a protagonist who can break through in times of danger, explode the small universe, and be resurrected with full health with a roar. A barrier sword came down vertically, splitting several sneak attack bounty hunters into two pieces in an instant, and saving the steel bear who was weakened by the crazy fighting. This guy has reached his limit. Dai Dai threw the steel bear back to the dreadnought battleship Saber, not wanting him to become a pile of bounty money in the hands of bounty hunters. Because of the deaths of Jack and the needle sword clown, if this guy wakes up, his strength will increase in the future. You two are almost there. Dai Dai also threw Desire and Queen Sweetheart back into the boat. That's right, he picked them up and threw them on, without paying any attention to their sullen eyes and unhappy expressions. But in Dai Dai's heart, 
he recognized the consciousness of these two women. If you are willing to participate in the battle, you have already taken the first step. Moreover, the two abilities of slippery fruit and pasty fruit are quite good to develop. In particular, the paste fruit can be pseudo-elementally transformed into a puddle of paste, if it imitates the special Paramisha Nuo Nuo fruit and Logia Marsh fruit, its abilities may have many unexpected tricks. Of course, the premise is that the Sugar Queen has the qualifications, talent and physical strength. When these bounty hunters and pirates saw Dai Dai reappearing on the battlefield, some of them ran away in the blink of an eye. Because they know very well what advantages can be taken advantage of, who can be touched, and who cannot be messed with. Seeing these guys trying to run away, how could Dai Dai let them go? Especially the bounty hunter team that just killed the needle sword clown, some of them were not killed by the big steel bear. Dai Dai said that whoever kills him will pay with blood. A long barrier knife formed in his hand, and he chased after him directly. Amidst the fearful sounds of the bounty hunter, blood and flesh flew everywhere in an instant, and corpses littered the road. Boom. A bounty hunter sniper hiding in the building had just leaned out the window to attack Dai Dai, but the next moment there was a bloody hole in his forehead. Fate no longer favors you. On another building, Van Oka's favorite gun, Qianlu, was puffing out a wisp of smoke, and said with an expressionless expression that it was time for him to leave the first half of the Grand Line. As Dai Dai joined the battle, the bounty hunters at the port of Martel Island began to collapse. They would not risk their lives for a difficult target. The captains of the two pirate ships that were hit at the beginning had been killed by Zoro and Crow. The two guys were now covered in blood and finished the first battle of the Grand Line, with Crow still stained and slightly injured. The fighting capabilities of Kim Man Agent and Sonic Edrago are also considered outstanding among the bounty hunters and pirates on the initial island of the Grand Line. The minions such as Tybee Baloo and the Catman Brothers finally survived, but now they also suffered a lot of injuries and were in a shaky state after entering the state of withdrawal. Under the leadership of Dai Dai, the Big Daddy pirates chased these bounty hunters and pirates, killing through half the town until all the guys who took action were slaughtered. The members of the underground Dark World branch on the island couldn't help but panic a little when they saw the Big Daddy pirates with such a murderous power, and they all reported the situation to their bosses. After half a day, among the largest bars on Martel Island, a pile of pirate heads were stacked in front of the bar counter of the bar. At this moment, blood was flowing on the ground, and the smell of blood filled the air, full of disgusting smell. The bar staff and some pirates and bounty hunters who didn't take action all looked at these murderous gods in silence. Cut the heads of these pirates yourself. I want information on the Grand Line bounty criminals, and the permanent pointer you have. Dai Dai looked at the bar manager with a murderous look on his face, as if the aura of the massacre had not dissipated yet. Behind this large bar, there are two or three underground dark emperors working together to protect it. Dai Dai does not want to provoke these dark emperors now. However, if the problem can be solved with money, then everything is easy to solve. The person in charge of this tavern was once a pirate with a bounty of 50 million belly. After taking refuge with the underground emperor, he had seen a lot of the world. Facing a new king like Dai Dai, although I am not very afraid, I am still a little wary. He was afraid that some young newcomers would ignore the reputation of the underground emperor and take action against them. Although there will be people to surround and suppress this stupid young man later, if he dies, his death will really be in vain. Captain Dai Dai, you seem to have overestimated the value of these pirates. Their heads cannot be exchanged for much information and permanent pointers. The person in charge of the bar said in a neither humble nor condescending manner, there are so many pirates in the Grand Line, and even if Dai Dui empties all his wealth, he still won't be able to obtain all the information. Dai Dai looked at the bar manager coldly, the atmosphere was a bit tense, but the guy looked at Dai Dai expressionlessly, unmoved at all. Dai Dai could only write down the names of pirates like Poison Q, and of course the names of a few supernovas. Dai Dai wanted to see the current location of these guys. The person in charge of the bar took a look at it, confirmed the approximate price, thought for a while, and then nodded. Today's price is 20% off for this brutal new king. These pirate heads are really not enough to buy the information about these pirates. In less than 10 minutes, a piece of information was delivered to Dai Dai. This is their location yesterday. As for where they are now, you can come again tomorrow to buy information. The person in charge of the bar looked at Dai Dai with a fake smile. Behind him were the three underground emperors, Big News, Sea Transport King, and Dark Gold King. They had very strong intelligence capabilities and were not afraid of these new pirates causing trouble. Dai Dai did not continue to worry too much. 
Anyway, all this information was exchanged for the heads of these pirates, so it was not a loss. However, these underground emperors make more money. Their business acumen is really good and they dominate these ways to make big money. They are richer than the four emperors, and even the four emperors purchase many of their supplies from these underground emperors. Fan Oka also took Dai Duo's money to complete all the permanent pointers of the initial seven wine islands, and also bought some of the more famous island permanent pointers. The Big Daddy pirates didn't stay too much on this Martel island. After all, they killed a lot of bounty hunters and pirates and offended a lot of people. So Dai Dai chose to hold a banquet on his ship to formally introduce Fan Oka to the crew of the Big Daddy pirates. Zoro and Crow were shocked by Van Oka's high bounty, but Van Oka was not interested in grabbing positions such as number two and number three. He would only follow the instructions of Dai Dai, the man of fate. With Van Oka as a professional sniper and Sonic Edrag as a sniper gunner, there is one less part time job, but he is still a long range Sonic gunner. Chef Carmen and several candy girls have prepared a feast for the Big Daddy pirates to reward these crew members who fought desperately. Dai Dai was carefully looking at the information in his hand deciding on the next target island. Trafalgar Law has already gone to sea so early? Dai Dai was a little surprised. The Heart Pirates have been established in North Blue for several years now. Dai Dai calculated the time and found that Luo had already established the pirate group when he was 16 or 17 years old. That year was the time when Doflamingo occupied Dress Rosa. Hell, it took this supernova seven or eight years to reach the Sabodi archipelago. Why did the Straw Hat Pirates arrive at the Sabodi Archipelago in less than half a year in the original work? However, Trafalgar Law has not yet entered the Grand Line, which makes Dai Dai a little disappointed. And he doesn't have the ability to make it to North Blue right now. Shinigami Poison Q appeared on Drum Island a month ago. He robbed a small pirate ship from Green Island the day before yesterday and was suspected of going to Plague Island. His whereabouts are now unknown. Dai Dai looked at this piece of information and immediately took out a map. Green Island is on the third route. If there is a permanent pointer, it will be very close to the Drum Island on the fourth route. However, if there is only a recording pointer, it is impossible to reach it. It seems that Poison Q has permanent pointers to Drum Island and Green Island. It's difficult. It's a little far away. Dai Dai squinted slightly, wondering whether Poison Q was worth a special trip to find. Initial 7 Wine Mountain Bacardi Peak. A sea beast pulls a huge sailing ship into the harbor. Dai Dai still did not choose to continue on the first route, but used the permanent pointer to come to the second route. Now the goal of the Big Daddy Pirates is to continuously strengthen themselves and recruit stronger crew members, rather than just rushing to the Sabodi Archipelago in New World. If you don't have the strength, you'll be blown away immediately when you enter New World. In addition to keeping a low profile and surrendering directly with his tail between his legs, he would either have his hands chopped off, or be maimed and imprisoned, and he would be forced to quit his addiction. Captain, there are a lot of pirate ships on this initial island today. It seems that a lot of pirate groups are returning from the middle section of the Grand Line. Based on his own experience, Otonokoshi Van Oka, a veteran, recognized quite a few pirate flags, but he felt a little strange. Why do these pirate groups return to this initial island? There are a lot of bloodlines in the port that haven't been cleaned up yet. They're still a little fresh. It won't take more than half a day. It seems that a lot of these bounty hunters have been killed. Beiji Crow saw the sword marks and bullet holes on the port, as well as a large number of bloodline, plus the intact pirate ships in the port, indicating that this bounty hunter island was besieged by pirates. At this time, noisy cheers came from the island, and the pirates who stayed behind to watch the ship did not attack them after seeing the pirate flag of the Big Daddy Pirates. It looks like this is a pirate gathering. Dai Dai was also a little curious, what made these pirate groups return to the original island to gather? And who organized this party? But soon, a pirate gave the Big Daddy Pirates the answer. Hey! Your sea beast pulling the boat is very cool. Are you also here to participate in the Golden Lion Boss's Thief Leader meeting recruitment? If you don't have any strength, just go up and join in the fun. There are now 43 captains joining the Thief Captains Association, and our captain will definitely grab the 44th captain position this time. The Golden Lion Boss's flying fleet will soon reappear in the sea and rule the entire world. The watchman on a pirate ship next to the port shouted excitedly to the Big Daddy Pirates, and kept looking at the sea beast Moo Moo. He seemed to be full of interest in this sea beast, and there was even a little spark in his eyes. Greedy possessiveness. Hearing the words of this pirate gangster, even Dai Dai frowned. 
Could he meet a legendary pirate like Golden Lion Shaki so soon? Is the boss of Golden Lion here? Beiji Kella, who has been studying Grand Line and New World knowledge recently, also knew some information about Golden Lion Shaki. After seeing Dai Dai's expression, he instantly understood Dai Dai's concerns, so he immediately took the initiative to shout asked. I'm afraid there is something wrong with your brain. How could the Golden Lion boss come to these small places? He must be actively planning to destroy Marine and destroy the world government. This pirate gangster cursed Baijikuluo, and then expressed his admiration for this legendary pirate with a look of reverence on his face. These pirate gangsters each took out a gorgeous golden poster while chattering away. The poster had a picture of Haki, the boss of the Golden Lion Shaki, on it. Golden Lion Shaki is the first epic pirate to escape from Impel Down's iron walls. He is a legendary pirate as famous as Whitebeard Newgate the leader of the four emperors and the strongest man in the world. He is the golden legendary pirate who can push the pirate king Roger into despair. Seeing these titles and promotional slogans, these pirates feel that as long as they can join Golden Lion Shiki's team, they will take the first step to conquer the world. That is to say, this gathering is a recruitment meeting initiated by Golden Lion Shiki, so how many places are there in today's recruitment? Dai Dai's face quickly returned to calm as long as Golden Lion Shaki himself was not present, otherwise he might have to consider a strategic retreat. He believes that he does not have the aura of the protagonist of Straw Hat Luffy, and it is impossible for him to defeat an old legendary pirate like Golden Lion Shaki. The boss of Golden Lion is of course recruiting the strongest captain. The encirclement and suppression of these bounty hunters this time is just an appetizer. The boss of Golden Lion once said that the world should see the cruelty of pirates, Pirates are not just pretenders, and bounty hunters are just the prey of our pirates. So whoever stands at the end in this robbery battle will be the 44th captain of the Golden Lion Thief Captain's Association. And this position must be obtained by our captain. This pirate gangster answered whatever he asked, allowing Dai Dai to once again see the simplicity of the pirate world, but it was also possible that this pirate gangster was showing off. After all, he was left to watch the ship, which shows his status on the ship, he had no chance to go up and witness the lively pirate duel. Now he can only beep here. However, because he heard that they had been showing off the golden lion very excitedly, Dai Dai quickly gave these pirates a big greeting from the sea, ending their noisy like ducks. Then the port finally fell silent. I saw that the few remaining pirates on this pirate ship were all covered with bruises, rolled their eyes and fainted on the ground. Then let's see what kind of guys come to Golden Lion Shiki's recruitment conference. Dai Dai looked at the gorgeous poster of Golden Lion that he grabbed and roughly understood the mission above. If the pirates who received the poster could sail back to the Bacardi Peak within three days, eliminate the bounty hunters, and then determine the strongest by. Then he is the 44th captain of the Golden Lion Thief Captain's Association and becomes the franchise captain of the Golden Lion Flying Fleet. Whether it's sailing back to the initial island, massacring bounty hunters, or killing each other among pirates, Golden Lion Shaki has screened these men time and time again. Dai Dai remembered that when Straw Hat Luffy went to sea and entered the Grand Line, Golden Lion Shiki's Thief Captain's Association seemed to have only recruited the 51st joining captain. Dai Dai couldn't figure out why Golden Lion Shiki, one of the more than 50 Grand Line captains, was overthrown by a few members of the Straw Hat Pirates. You know, the captain of the Amigo Pirates, Larugo, a user with the Paramecia Net Fruit ability, was ordered by the Golden Lion to capture the escaped giant unicorn in order to become the 51st captain of the Golden Lion Thief Captain's Association. Join the mission. When Larugo captured the giant unicorn, he once captured the three main members of the Straw Hat Pirates. And this kind of guy is something that Golden Lion Shaki doesn't like, and he almost wiped out the Straw Hat Pirates. As for this kind of pirate group, there may be 50 of them in the Golden Lion's Chief Thieves Association. Then Dai Dai can only say that Luffy in the theatrical version is the real god. Even if rocks and I am appear, they will be slapped twice, rubber rubber sun god big butt bag. As for the impelled down material library for the theatrical version, there are also World Destroyer Burn D World, Douglas Bullet, Red Earl Beloric Redfield. These big shots are all going to be F asterisk Ked by Nika, the sun god. Dai Dai took his crew and landed on Bacardi Island. At this time, in the bounty hunter town under the Bacardi Peak, pirates had completely occupied the place, and the bodies of bounty hunters were everywhere. The pirate captains have also begun their duel. As long as they become the strongest here, their pirate group will join the legendary leg of Golden Lion Shaki. Are you afraid that you will not be able to walk sideways in the Grand Line in the future? 
In the dual venue in the center of the Bacardi Grand Plaza, there was only one order maintainer sent by Golden Lion Shaki. He also had a live phone bug in his hand, which seemed to be broadcasting the battle situation here back to the headquarters on Sky Island. When Dai Dai and the others arrived at the noisy square, two pirates were fighting fiercely above, with the screams of swords clashing and sparks flying. This fierce and blood-soaking battle made Zoro next to Dai Dai tighten his grip on the handle of his knife, his eyes filled with emotion. Look at it. This is the quality of Grand Line Pirates. Dai Dai was also watching the battle on the field, and at the same time he was scanning the nearby pirate groups to see if there were any familiar faces. At this time, Dai Dai saw a stout man wearing a mask, who had been beaten to a bloody head and had several bloody wounds on his body. He had been kicked out of the duel circle, but he still looked unconvinced. Appearance. It seems that he was defeated by another pirate captain just now. Fighting champion Giza's badges has a bounty of 20 million baileys. He is an arrogant fighting maniac. I didn't expect that his life would be so tough. He is really a lucky guy. Following Dai Dai's line of sight, Otonokoshi Van Oka quickly recognized the little pirate badgers. This bounty was indeed quite low in the grand line. Unexpectedly, such a poor person could still survive, which shows that his fate is not bad. Good recovery. Looks like you have a strong physique. Dai Dai glanced at Badgers and said casually. Then he looked at the figure on the field, with a black hairstyle like three pointed cones. Captain of the Spike Pirates, Spike the Hedgehog, Zone, the user with the Hedgehog fruit ability, has a bounty of 78 million baileys. Otonokoshi Van Oka also looked at the pirate captain a little seriously. The bounty was higher than him, and he seemed to have awakened a hint of armament hockey, which made people feel very difficult to deal with. Dai Dai watched with interest as another familiar pirate captain went up to fight with this powerful hedgehog fruit user in a duel. This pirate captain wearing a huge hat can actually turn his body into a net. However, it seems that he did not develop many abilities soon after eating devil fruit. In less than 10 minutes, he was already knocked down by this majestic hedgehog fruit user. Who else? Spike the hedgehog looked up to the sky and screamed. Even though he had been beaten for two hours, he still firmly defended the center of the square as if he was an invincible defender. The ability user who was defeated just now seems to be a new person. It must be the first time to enter the Grand Line, and he accidentally broke into the gathering here. Otonokoshi Van Oka didn't recognize who this net fruit user was for a while. He seemed to be a newbie pirate group from West Blue. Dai Duo glanced at Larugo, the net fruit user who was seriously injured. The crew of the Amigo Pirates were panicking to protect their captain and quickly evacuate this dangerous island. They didn't expect that they would encounter such a powerful warrior on the first island and beat their powerful captain like a chicken. Not bad ability, stopping them, and intercepting that Giza's badges. Dai Dai smiled, and then said to Fan Oka and Crow. Both Badgers and Larugo were injured. They knew that after being injured, they could not continue to stay among the pirates. Otherwise, if someone kills you, it will only be because you are too young. Just be more careful in your next life. Dai Dai was too lazy to watch this hedgehog fruit user unleashing Kamui. It was estimated that no one could break through his spiked defense. It seemed that he was about to become the 44th captain of the Golden Lion Thieves Association. Dai Dai never thought about joining the war, he didn't want to be Golden Lion Shiki's subordinate. If he refuses to join the Thieves Association because he won the first place, he might be personally targeted by Golden Lion Shiki, the good looking old man at the helm, which would be a bit troublesome. The pirates at the scene were very excited and noisy, and the challenge continued. Neither Spike the Hedgehog nor the staff of Golden Lion Shaki noticed the arrival of Dai Dai, the new king. Otherwise, it is estimated that the ringmaster will challenge the newcomer Dai Dai by name again, or the staff will see the potential of this guy Dai Dai and directly invite him to the stage to fight. Dai Dai ignored the duel at Bacardi Plaza for the time being. The Big Daddy pirates had already intercepted the Amigo pirates and Giza's badgers on the periphery. The guy who is targeted by Dai Dewey doesn't have much choice. Either join or die. Hey. This is a pirate festival. Do you want to be as disgusting as those bounty hunter rats? Although Giza's Bajas had partially recovered from his wounds, he was still a little weak. Seeing that he was surrounded by people, he was also a little angry and panicked. Although he is reckless, it does not mean that he is stupid. Surround others when they are hurt, and you will know what to do without even thinking. Giza's Bajas. Do you want to join us? You always wander around alone, but you will be eliminated easily. Dai Dai said to the future captain of the Blackbeard Pirates first team, saying that he is the number one fan of Blackbeard Teach, 
so his loyalty is nothing to say, otherwise he would not be able to get the position of captain number one. You recruited him, why did you stop us too? Get out of here. Kurt, the vice captain of the Amigo Pirates, shouted to Dai Dai that now his brother Larugo was seriously injured and had no time to tangle with these pirates. He must return to the ship for treatment as soon as possible, and hurry up and leave this dangerous island. Our captain is talking, what qualifications do you have to speak, idiot? Poof. The next moment Beiji Crow had inserted his espada into Kurt's waist. He did not expect that the pirates who could enter the Grand Line were still so stupid and seemed completely unable to understand their current situation. How dare you say such arrogant words under such circumstances? There is no use for such an idiot pirate until he dies. Seeing Crow's decisive and ruthless actions, Badger swallowed back the curse words he was about to say. Now that we are outnumbered and outnumbered, we have been injured again. If we talk any more trash, we will really get screwed. But he took a closer look at Dai Dai, and he seemed familiar. Suddenly, he had an idea. Isn't this the new East Blue King who has been in the news recently? It looks like a young thigh. Captain Dai Dai looks like a hero at first glance. It is an honor for me to join the Big Daddy Pirates. From now on, you will be my Captain Big Daddy. Giza's badges said with a sincere look on his face, and his face changed so quickly that even the crew members of the Big Daddy Pirates were amazed. Seeing that Badgers, a big and honest man, changed his attitude so quickly and joined the Big Daddy Pirates. In addition, his brother was directly stabbed by the opponent, which made the seriously injured Larugo look even paler. Grand Line is really too dangerous. Captain, we are all pirates. Why bother fighting each other? And don't forget that this is a gathering organized by the legendary pirate Golden Lion Shiki. Larugo remembered the Golden Lion poster and immediately shouted that he wanted to attract the attention of other pirate groups and completely get rid of Dai Duo's entanglement. Although he, a newcomer, has not found out the information about Golden Lion and Dai Dai, now he can only use the power of Golden Lion to make Dai Dai, a pirate, afraid. If he was forced to join the other party's pirate group, then his own amigo pirate group would be disbanded, and he would never abandon these friends who had followed him all the way from West Blue. Hey! Do you think Golden Lion cares about a loser like you? Remember that sentence, pirates are not just playing house. Now you only have two choices, join or be done with it. Dai Dai ignored the stares of some other pirate groups and sneered at the net net fruit ability user. This trick of pretending to be powerful was of no use to him. If you use someone else's name, you don't have to fight, so why are you a pirate? Is this guy trying to be like Straw Hat Luffy? If I can beat him, I will be the Pirate King. If I can't beat him, I will be Monkey D. Luffy. However, Larugo does not have a strong background like Straw Hat Luffy, which can make pirates and marines extremely afraid. Hey! What are you arguing about? What are you doing? Don't interfere with us watching the duel. You dare to cause trouble here, are you tired of living? Where did you come from, you little brat, daring to cause trouble in Lord Golden Lion's recruitment conference? Some pirates on the periphery were shouting and cursing especially some of the defeated pirates. They were already suffocating in their hearts and now wanted to vent their anger again. As they booed, more and more defeated pirates joined in. It was like a spark falling into a powder keg, completely detonating these violent pirates. The pirate spectators in this area were all attracted by the noise here. The smell of gunpowder here seemed to be more exciting than the battle with Spike the Hedgehog. These pirates don't think it's a big deal, and they all look forward to a fight here. It's best to break out into a full scale battle, so as to seek a little excitement. Larugo couldn't help but get excited. He had done the right thing. He could completely use the anger of these pirates to make the matter bigger, and then they would be able to find opportunities to escape. What, you guys want to dance too? Dai Dai, who looked a little gloomy, seemed to have made some decision, and suddenly grinned at these cursed pirates. At the same time, the look in Larugo's eyes turned completely indifferent. Larugo was also frightened by Dai Dai's deathly look and was so frightened that he broke into a cold sweat. At this moment, he felt as if he had made a wrong decision. Kid. You are so awesome. How much is the reward? A stout pirate carrying a machete said with a ferocious smile, and was drooling. He looked at Desire who had eaten the slippery fruit with fascination, his eyes full of desire. Oka, if the live phone bug over there looks over, snipe it. Dai Dai said coldly. He now agrees more and more with Fan Oka's point of view. Some people's fate is doomed. Looking at these yelling pirates, Dai Dai's eyes were filled with murderous intent. The barking of the weak is so powerless in his eyes. Understood, my captain. Van Oka replied calmly, 
This is really an arrogant captain. Is he preparing to have a relationship with a legendary pirate like Golden Lion Shaki? Be careful in the next life. Trash. A red light flashed in Dai Dai's eyes, and he rushed out in an instant. A barrier blade appeared in his hand, and he split the arrogant pirate carrying a machete in half. Blood and internal organs splashed out in an instant. The noisy pirates were suddenly silenced like a duck being choked. Seeing Captain Dai Dai launch an attack, this was like a signal, and the other crew members also took action, drawing their swords and killing these heckled pirates. Larugo looked extremely pale as he watched the brutal fight of the Big Daddy pirates. Is this crazy? How dare you launch an indiscriminate attack on so many pirate groups? If you don't have strength, every choice will be particularly important. And this time you made the wrong choice, the price will be the lives of your entire group. Dai Dai appeared in front of Larugo like a demon, and his ruthless voice gently passed into Larugo's ears. Wait a moment. With a flash of sword light, the head of Kurt, the vice captain of the Amigo Pirates, fell to Larugo's feet. No, Kurt. Larugo immediately hugged his brother's head and burst into tears, looking at the demon Dai Dua with anger and fear. In the end, his anger overcame his fear, and he attacked Dai Dai brazenly. His body turned into a blazing grid and covered Dai Dai intending to capture and strangle Dai Dai. Too weak. The barrier blade in Dai Dai's hand slowly turned from transparent to pitch black, reflecting a dazzling metallic black light. The black light flashed and whizzed by. Dai Dai had already rushed to the rear of Larugo. Then, with cold eyes, he slashed across with a 40-meter-long knife, instantly cutting off the entire crew of the Amigo pirates. This area instantly turned into a hell on earth, with blood and flesh splattered everywhere. Bang. Larugo's upper body floating in the air finally fell to the ground. His face was bloodless, and he raised his head with difficulty, looking desperately at all the dead crew members. He looked at his brother Kurt's head with tears, his lips trembling, his pupils dilated, and he closed his eyes forever before he could say the last word. This amigo pirate group from West Blue had just entered the Grand Line and was already wiped out. At this point, this generation of Paramecia net fruit users died, and the net fruit was reborn in an unknown place. The brutal fighting here quickly attracted the attention of the Bacardi Grand Plaza dual venue. The hedgehog spike and the order maintainer under the Golden Lion also looked at the noisy pirates outside with a little annoyance. As today's protagonist, Spike the Hedgehog doesn't want others to steal his limelight. This is his personal performance time to join the Golden Lion Thief Club. What happened? Order maintainer Elmo held up a live broadcast phone and shouted loudly that this unexpected situation had affected his ability to continue broadcasting for Phikong headquarters. Although Lord Golden Lion may not necessarily watch the little fights of these pirates, there are still other small cadres who will select captains for Lord Shaki to join. However, at the next moment, three consecutive gunshots were fired, causing Elmo to dodge quickly, but the live phone bug in his hand was still shot. His eyes widened in disbelief. He didn't expect that any pirate would dare to attack him. 